be staying here. Well, that decision hasn't been official. I'd like to be the audience know what the chair's inclination is. So it's time to decide to go to the last standards. I can't decide until I'm in a meeting, so that's the law. We follow the law here. Okay. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. Today is the 15th day of 2019. And you're all anxious to join me in pledging allegiance to our republic, huh? Let's do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to uh, begin by uh, pointing out a couple of rules that we're going to have for tonight's public hearing. We have uh, two public hearings that we have uh, scheduled for tonight, one for the town and one for SAU 90. Can Channel 22 give me the monitor, please? Each warrant article that has been voted on by the Budget Committee will be addressed until all the articles in the given warrant have been addressed in the following manner, which you'll see on the monitor. Each article will be introduced by the chairman. The public will be invited to speak on the article introduced and limit their statements to matters concerning the warrant article on the table. Members of the public may speak for a maximum of five minutes at a time. If a member of the public wishes to speak again on a given article, that may occur only after everyone else wishing to speak for the first time has had a chance to do so. Budget committee members shall not ask questions of the public. Members may ask the chair to ask questions only for the purposes of clarification. Budget committee members shall not respond to questions or statements made by the public during the public hearing. When all have spoken on the article they wish to speak, the chair will close the discussion on the article and proceed with the next article. When all articles have been addressed for a given warrant, the public hearing will be closed and the budget committee will proceed to reconsider its prior vote in the following manner. Motions to reconsider may be made and seconded only by members that voted on the winning side of the previous budget committee vote. Motions to reconsider will only be accepted if the committee heard public input on the article. When members of the public begin to speak, they must introduce themselves by name and primary address. Speakers shall limit themselves to matters relating to the article on the table and avoid unnecessary redundancy. No interruptions or outbursts of any kind, including applause, booing, etc., shall occur. If it does occur, the violators will be subject to removal from this meeting. Is the committee okay with these rules? Yes, yes, yes. I have a Mr. Frank. I have a question. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we move this meeting to Hampton Academy because of the size of the crowd. The question is on the rules right now, Frank. Well, so. I'd second his motion. The question is on the rules right now. Everyone okay with the rules? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, the SAU uh, 90 uh, warrant on a public hearing uh, will now be open at 7.02. And I would suggest to this committee that given the crowd, and we have a spillover crowd upstairs, that we, uh, and they appear to be mostly here over at SA 90, uh, that we uh, continue this public hearing until Thursday night at the Academy. Okay with the, uh, the, the, the committee? So what are, you, what are you saying? We won't do SA 90 tonight? Correct. We'll do it Thursday? Correct. That way no. SA 90... No. Excuse me! No interruptions. That way, we'll be able to give SAU 90 the entire evening on Thursday night to fully vent themselves. We try to squeeze every, all of these comments in in one night. We may not likely get through them all. So if we segment them, everyone will have a chance to speak. Mr. Frank. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to reiterate my motion that we have this meeting tonight for SAU 90 because of the size of the crowd, because they have taken interest in coming here. Uh, so I suggest, uh, I recommend that we move this meeting to the Hampton Academy. It is set up, ready to go. There is going to be no interruption, and we can <coughs> deal with this accordingly. I have a second for discussion. May I discuss? No. I have 
I'm sure I'm not the only one that has been running back and forth today, all day, on top of what I normally do on a Tuesday, plus everything else I'm trying to get done. And I'm sure for all of you that worked all day or have kids, and I'm assuming that most of you are here for the budget for the school tonight. And since we are elected for the people, by the people, I say that, yes, everything. I say that we have the SAU 90 meeting, wherever the chief thinks is the appropriate place for us to have it. Right now, tonight. Thank you. Any other discussion on yes. the motion? Mr. Ladd. I would say the duty of this committee is to serve the community, which is the people. The community is well represented tonight, and to have a, a second meeting where there sh has always been one which covered both parts of the budget seems to be an enormous inconvenience and an unreasonable burden to place on other people in this room. Any other discussion? Mr. Warburton. A couple of concerns I have, and, and it's pretty it's pretty realistic, and I don't know why anybody's saying it. If what Regina is saying is true, we have another issue. Is the town prepared to come Thursday night for their budget because or warrant review? So I don't care. Well, These wait, a minute. Here wait, a minute. Regina Brian wait a minute. Has the floor. Wait a minute. So we're trying to accommodate one group, and in, in, in essence, the other group would have to be understand that there is no way we're going to accommodate all the stuff we're doing tonight. Um, let me make something clear to the public out here tonight, because I've been a brunt all weekend along, and I'm really tired of it, to, to be honest with you. What the chairman is doing is doing what he's legally supposed to do. It doesn't work the way that people on social media decide to orchestrate the school campaign against this committee <laughs> to do what they want to do. Everybody in this room knows what the rules are. So... For Chairman Jones to, to post a meeting in the Selectman's reading, meeting room tonight and also to say if it's overflown, as our chief has said, he absolutely has the right to, to say move to Thursday night. I think we have to be very careful because if we start basing our changes on decisions on crowd size versus legal requirements, I think we're going down the wrong road. Now, I certainly appreciate, and remember what the Chairman's comment was, it gives the schools an entire evening on Thursday evening to go to the Academy yeah we would have liked to have a bigger room here and things would have worked out and everything but it didn't work out that way but there's going to be inconvenience on all sides not just the schools and I think we have to we, we just can't work backwards the way this and this was orchestrated let's know let's not make any buns about it and I gotta tell you you know I would offer one suggestion for uh, my colleagues in the audience and people I've known for years Let's be very careful when you're talking about the budget committee and not other committees, because some of the stuff in the other committees is absolutely outrageous what's going in the way they talk to people. So, wait a minute. Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. I have the floor, and uh, we all have thick skin, but we've all tried to do a great job this year. I think this committee has done a great job, and we've come to the point where I wonder if this all would have happened if some of us didn't, if we had all voted unanimously for the budget and everything else, we wouldn't have heard from anybody. So. I agree with the chairman. I think he's being very fair with what's going on, and I think I will follow what the chairman has asked us to do. Any other discussion from someone who hasn't spoke for it yet? Uh, Mr. LeBranch. I don't, I, I'm, I, I have a problem. <clears throat> All of these people are here tonight. I would like very much get this done with because just as you people are here tonight I'm here too okay and I don't get paid to do this it's a volunteer thing and we've been meeting for months now sometimes twice a week and it's not easy last week I had three meetings because I had a village district meeting and two budget committee meetings <coughs> and I know everybody's busy okay to have to do this again Thursday. I'd like to get the whole thing done tonight. So would I. Okay. Yeah. That's just, that's just, I know, we've already, we're already 10 minutes into this. And I know that it's up to, the, the chief can pull the plug in this if he wants. That's all there is to it because that's his job, okay, for safety of all you people. But I'd sure like to get this done tonight. That's just my opinion. If anyone else Thank has you not spoken much. on this motion. Just yeah. as annoyed. You know, I'd like to get at least one done tonight. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and I'd rather have 
if SAU 90, for instance, has a long discussions and many people at the microphone, we may not even finish SAU 90. <laughs> well, if we don't. Uh, and But I'd like to get at least one done tonight. Uh, and that's all I have to say at the moment. Anybody else that hasn't spoken yet? Okay, Mr. Frank, you got the second bite. Okay, thank you. Uh, my original motion was to move the entire meeting, not just SAU 90. So that means we can go over to That's the SAU 90 mm -hmm. accommodations and deliberate on the town and SAU 90 combined tonight. All right. Uh, I do know for a fact uh, that the superintendent did reach out to the chairman earlier this week, and I believe last Friday, I may be incorrect on that, uh, offering the facilities. So, and it was mentioned again last night at the selectman meeting about the utilization of Hampton Academy, and there was no response from this board. So, again, I'd like to reiterate that we moved the entire meeting, SAU 90, the town of Hampton, to the Hampton Academy, and deliberate tonight on everything. And I'll Mr. second that motion again. again. And the only thing is, um, Mr. DeLuca, is that we're going to lose, by the time this he recesses and we all regather at the other place, we're going to lose an hour, okay? That's right. It's right across, across the street. The street. Ten minutes. Well, okay, a half. Across the street. We're going to the academy, right? It's right yeah, it's right next door, okay. right behind well, the library. At least a half hour. Okay, okay. half hour. So that would make it 7.30. We do have an open meeting, is that correct? Let's do it. Yes. Correct. So we need to have this building, this, this permanent assembly honored. So I do need to clear out that room. You had asked me for that. I gave you that permission. We need to clear out the standards, as I've already instructed. Do what you must. Move into the overflow. Okay? Do what you must. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, please, I'm going to have you. Thank you, Mr. The Chair. This time. Thank you. I received the uh, invite from Kathleen Murphy, Superintendent of Schools, to use the Hampton Academy. I believe she sent that email on Monday, yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, I know that everyone in the world seems to think I am glued to my computer. And that is not the case. I was out of town. In fact, I was out of state. In fact, I was outside of New England uh, for that period of time. I just arrived back here late this morning, which I did respond to Kathleen immediately. We discussed the possibilities, and the possibility that I offered earlier is, is a definite uh, possibility. Uh, the one that Frank put out is a uh, possibility. Uh, but as Steve uh, LeBranch pointed out, we're going to lose time just, just going over there. 20 minutes. And, um, it's right there. It's right there. I fly around this town all day, every day. It takes two minutes. Excuse me, Regina. There. I don't believe you have the floor. And so, you know, just to summarize to get the facts correct, I, w I did respond to uh, Kathleen as well, soon I, as I, I had no knowledge you were out of town, sir. Frank, I'm now giving you that knowledge. So I did respond to Kathleen. I appreciate the, the offer, and uh, we may very well need to use it, as I suggested to Kathleen earlier this morning, or late this morning, actually. And uh, we certainly can do that, OK? Uh, we can do it for Thursday night. We can do it for subsequent nights if necessary. Uh, and yeah, from the Academy's perspective, apparently we could even do it tonight. Whether or not. Uh, someone wants to be removed for interrupting this meeting or not is entirely their choice. But the bottom line is this. We're going to have to decide what we want to do as a committee. So is there any further discussion on Frank's motion in which he wants us all to go pack up and go over to the academy? I seconded it. <laughs> yes, the motion is, in fact, on the table. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, I, Channel 22, if we were over to the Happen Academy, will they be able to get online right away so that people in public can see what's happening? It'll be taped. Taped. Mr. Ladd. The argument being raised is we're going to lose some time crossing the street. If we don't <laughs> do it tonight, we lose a lot more time exactly. than crossing the street. Everyone is here. I think we should go as far as we can. And if we hit a wall, we will have done what we could. Exactly. Is there, Any other discussion? Is Mr. there a cutoff tonight here? 10 o'clock or 10.30? I, I have not established a cutoff yet. I have not established a cutoff for tonight yet, and I don't have an immediate intention to do so. But obviously, reasonableness 
Always is it. John 22, I thought they go off the year. Regina. Could we listen to Kathleen Murphy? I think she has something to do. The discussion is amongst ourselves. Well, I think she wants to have a discussion about what we're talking about. So maybe since it's. Anyone object to Kathleen joining our conversation? No. Go ahead, Kathleen. Thank you. Come on. Jerry. Jerry. Uh, uh, we are prepared to record the meeting this evening. Our media dir uh, director, uh, John Judson, is available and ready to go. The cameras are set up. So we will record it. We're also going to live stream it. So if you're on at home on your computer, you'll still be able to see it. See. Okay? Okay. But it won't be on channel 22. No. Live. Any other discussion on the motion? Does everyone stand? Uh, Mr. Why Fluff? don't you do it right here, right now? Do what? They're upstairs waiting. You spent 15 minutes talking about it. Well, I got a motion to deal with. What can I do about it? Well, we call for so the vote. Either move so ahead. I'm working on that. Okay. Any, Mr. Zanoy. Realize that if we get it to SAU 90 right here, right now, we'll never ever get it to Town of Hampton. We can always do Town of Hampton first. That hasn't been determined yet. So, can I just ask a point of clarification? As Mr. Pluff just said, are we at, are we at uh, full capacity now? Could we start? Could we do the meeting here with the overflow upstairs? Yes. The, yes. the present the present argument on that point is that there is an overflow in the uh, lobby, essentially, where they have mm -hmm. a TV and they can watch the meeting. Right. I'm uncomfortable with that because I believe I don't know if the law actually explicitly says this. But I believe a meeting needs to be in a venue in which all that wish to be in the meeting can actually be in the meeting and not have to go watch it on TV somewhere else. So I'm uncomfortable with having the overflow to begin with. And I'd rather avoid that because I, everyone should have an equal shot at the, at the microphone, et cetera. Plus there's a tape delay, which is inconsequential but noteworthy. It's going to happen anyway. Um, any other discussion on this I just motion? Say stay here, Mike said. Any other discussion on this motion? No? All right. So you understand the motion is to pick up, pack our bags and walk over or otherwise transport ourselves to the academy in which we will then reconvene from this point. Okay? Mr. LeBranch. Otherwise, we're going to continue this meeting right here, right now. Is that the... That's the default unless we make another motion. Yeah. Okay. We're all, we're all clear on the motion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Mr. Ladd, Mr. Frank, and Regina. You got that, uh, Barbara? All the representatives. All those opposed, raise your hand. That would be all the at-large members in opposition. Okay. So, uh, what does the committee wish to do? Does it wish to uh, continue to proceed with SA United right now? Yes. 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 Okay. Great. Yes. You, you just made the comment. If you don't know if we can legally do that, how can you sit here and continue this meeting if you don't know if the law states you can have an overflow up there? The uh, first uh, article is the uh, budget you article. You can ignore me all you want. One more interruption. I'll walk out. That'd be great. This Thank you. This is insanity. Thank you. You're an elected Good official. night. No, stay. Further interruptions will subject you to removal from this meeting. Then, then remove me. Chief, he wishes to be removed. I think the people want to be heard. You work for us. First one up is the uh, public hearing on Article 1. Does anyone wish to speak on Article 1, which is the budget? Total proposed budget is $23,585,440 with a default budget of $23,387,188. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on Article 1? Please, ma'am. You state your name and primary address, please. <coughs> Morning, DeLuca, 13 Raymond Lane, Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, resident, taxpayer, and employee of the Hampton School District. The school budget that was not recommended by several members of this committee includes an additional special education case manager that would be responsible for a self-contained emotional learning and life skills program. This program would be for students who cannot successfully access the general education classroom 
due to a variety of reasons such as trauma and emotional issues, to name a few. This program would be similar to the Decisions Program at Winniconnet High School, which services a number of our students when in high school. It would provide for a smaller academic setting to meet the academic and emotional needs of these students. The alternative to this program would be an out-of-district placement, which would cost more than $100,000 per student and therefore cost the taxpayers much more than the passage of this school budget would cost them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? Please. Good evening. Name My name that. is Amy Hansen, and I uh, live at 98 Lock Road. As a parent, I'm here as a parent, a resident of Hampton, and an employee of SAU 90. Uh, firstly, let me say the behavior of this committee is unacceptable. And not only in the tone and manner in which you speak to each other, but also especially to those that come before you. I must encourage you to choose civility. What is civility? Civility refers to the way people treat each other with respect, even when they disagree. Even though disagreement and confrontation play a necessary role in politics, the issue is how that disagreement <coughs> is expressed. The key is to focus on the strengths and weaknesses at hand and not to engage in personal attacks against those who favor different solutions. All town committees should be required to adhere to the code of civility. We expect our children and our schools to act responsibly, manage themselves, and respect themselves and others. The adults that serve our community should be expected to as well. That being said, let's jump into a few of the topics brought up by last week. One member of this committee mentioned that the Hampton Academy renovation project only passed by 13 votes. Excuse me, ma'am. We're only talking I'm, about. I'm article, getting to the budget. It's all, it. it's all part of it. It's all we're part of it. Right now, I'm so getting there. Because it was discussed when we were discussing the budget, he kept under his breath saying the Hampton Academy, they got 13 votes. So it is applicable to what we're talking about. Admittedly, I'm passionate about this project and worked hard to get it passed. I'd like to remind you the bond was passed with 60% of the votes cast. More than 60% of the voters said yes. The negative under the breath comments about this project by members of this committee are not valid under the context to current budget or Warren articles, and they were brought up during the <coughs> discussion. Though you might not have agreed with this project, many members of this community wholeheartedly and very proud of this investment that we have made. $26 million is a lot of money. The renovation and additions add 40,000 square feet to the building. Per your suggestion that we wait a year to provide sufficient care and maintenance for this community-funded investment is poor management. Wait and see what? That the building isn't clean? We already know that the increased square footage will require additional staff. This is not a close your eyes and wait and see what happens investment. The additional custodian will earn thir approximately $37,000, which results in $6 per year per $300,000 household. On to mental health and safety, which is also affected by our budget. There seems to be confusion in the understanding of the 20% contribution to match the safety improvement grant. Your reaction and under the breath comments appear to imply that SEU 90 is gouging the taxpayers for safety improvements on top of the 26 million, were your exact words. You stated, we don't need these improvements because we haven't had a school shooting here. For the record, 2018 was the worst year recorded in the history of school shootings, with one occurring every eight days based on a 180-day school year. You are right, it hasn't happened here, but unfortunately, we have to add the word yet. School shootings happen in communities all over the United States, in schools and districts of varying si sizes, and it can happen here, and we must be prepared. Regarding trauma, the district has been proactively working on implementing a trauma-informed approach. Trauma impacts the ability to learn. We must provide support to every student and continue to train every staff member in our district. Please support the proposed child and family interventionist position, which will earn about $44,000 and be a tax impact of $7 per household. We all know someone impacted by death, divorce, violence, drug abuse, and more, and we have students in our community who are affected, and it is our duty to support them in their learning. Sometimes, in the interest of saving property taxes or being rational taxpayers, we overlook the people who work in our community. I have worked for the town, and I now currently work for the school district. In full disclosure, I am a para under the per current proposed bargaining agreement that's being discussed. When working for the town, I worked 30 hours per week, and at that time, a law was passed at the national level that employees working 30 hours a week or more are provided with benefits. Instead of that, the town cut my hours to 28 hours per week so that I would not be eligible. I love this town. 
I want to work here, live here, and raise my family here. When you think of property taxes as the sole priority in your decision making, you are overlooking the people who work here and live here. Why do you think there was such a marketed push for bargaining agreements for public works, fire, police, and schools in recent years? All of the income I bring to my family is spent in this community. When I buy groceries, when I get gas, when I buy prescriptions to visit the doctor or order takeout. Yes, we need to do our best to keep taxes within reach for those that live here, but also to reasonably care and pay the members of our community a fair and decent wage. Thank you for this opportunity to speak, and as a reminder to all of us, that includes everybody back here, we, don't, we have to let the meeting occur, is that civility refers to the way we treat people, we treat each other with respect, even when we disagree, please choose civility. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Yes. It was Amy Hanson. If that's what you're asking. Um, I'm asking if she would kindly uh, put her name and, and address right on the sheet. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Our recording secretary has put a sheet up there for you to put your name and, and address on I will so add she can system. accurately record Thank the names and the minutes. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on Article 1, ma'am? Hmm? Can you give me one second, please? Sure. Too late. Point of order, uh, Mr. Chairman. There is a delay in, in the from going from here to upstairs, yeah. about 20 seconds. Right. I didn't know if you knew that or not, yeah. so when you when you have somebody come down, you got to give them a... 30 seconds at least here at the condemn. Hmm. It's part of the reason I'm uncomfortable with this two tier thing. Right? I don't disagree with you. It was an option. Ma'am. Good evening. Jackie Kennedy, 718 Street, Hampton. I'm here on behalf of my husband and myself to express our support for both the SAU 90 budgets and the town budgets to be presented in the upcoming town warrant. We firmly believe they were crafted with a great deal of professionalism, thought, care, and consideration by the department heads who answer directly to the town manager, selectmen, school board, and the residents of Hampton. As longtime residents, we consider Hampton to be incredibly fortunate <coughs> to have department heads and staff who possess a wealth of educational credentials and highly regarded professional backgrounds in each of their chosen fields that allows them to guide and serve our community with expertise while also paying close attention to the prudence needed to use our collective resources wisely. For who they are and how they conduct themselves, they have our appreciation and support. Additionally, we wish to acknowledge our gratitude to the many citizens of Hampton who diligently serve as elected or appointed representatives to the various boards in our community, specifically those who serve guided by the most basic yet important principles of humility, civility, courtesy, and respect. They too have our gratitude and support. That being said, we feel it necessary to add our voices to those who believe that the recent tone and conduct of members of the Budget Committee is doing a grave disservice to our Hampton community. We watched the interaction among members of the committee and toward representatives of SAU 90 at last week's meeting. The chairman and some members of the Budget Committee treated Superintendent Murphy and Assistant Superintendent Lunny with a level of disrespect that is simply unacceptable that they spoke to them in a manner that reflected such animosity and disdain while claiming to do so in the name of public service and in the interest of Hampton residents made it even more abhorrent. Their conduct toward them was nothing short of disgraceful. Yet sadly it was consistent with the condescension directed toward the department heads from police, fire, public works and other town agencies who have come before them present their budget over the course of the past number of meetings that we've watched. We believe Hampton deserves better from our elected and appointed officials. Civility, humility, courtesy, and respect should be the fundamental guiding principles of public service. Indeed, we expect that they should serve as the foundation for the demeanor, the words, and the conduct of those who accept the charge to serve the residents of our Hampton community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on Mr. Pierce, please join us. Michael Pierce, 84 Lock Road. 
I'd like for the chairman to be, uh, request that everybody stay on point. We're talking about the budget article. If they can't stay on the budget article, ask them to refrain from speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on Article 1, the budget? Uh, Joe McCoy, 10 Katie Lane, Hampton resident since 2001. I'm here in full disclosure on behalf of my wife, who is a uh, union president and a paraprofessional in the school. And um, I actually just wanted to check my math here. I'm actually chief estimator for a major construction company in Massachusetts. I deal with contracts all the time. And the difference between the budget and the default is it's a lot of money, almost $200,000, but as a percentage, 0.84%, less than 1%, actually. So to me, I always look at value more so than cost. And I think as uh, you know, a budget committee, I understand your job is difficult. But I would look and uh, really look at the asset that is being built here. It's a tremendous asset in the new uh, school construction project, and I do have a point with this. When I look at the value of that and what that would be worth if it were built in Massachusetts, it would easily be $50 million. So you're getting a tremendous value. I think a big objection to the increase if I understand it, is in the added custodial staff, if I had heard that correctly. That custodial staff is essential in maintaining that new facility that's being built. So I would really implore the public out there to look at protecting the assets of the community. It's a tremendous benefit to the community. We voted for it, 60%, and I would applaud if we would get a re-vote on this and actually have it recommended. Just for Thank clarity, you. you're, you're actually concerned about the uh, Increased custodial staff? Is that, is that your primary concern? That's not my concern. That's what I thought I had heard. You're right. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? <coughs> Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? Please step up to the microphone if you wish to speak on Article 1. I see no one else. Uh, therefore, I will. I will, well, we're giving them time to come down. So we will move on to Article 2. Article 2 is the uh, union contract for Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association. Uh, budget Committee recommended this 7 to 1. Anyone wish to speak on Article 2? Please. I'm shorter than you, Joe. Not my husband. Oh, there are. Okay. okay, so I need to wait. Well, we'll entertain them when they get here. You can proceed with Article 2. Okay. Wait, no, 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 no. I have not, I have not closed the hearing on Article 1. Sure. Sure, thank you. Appreciate it. Article 1, right? It is Article 1. I okay. believe that's. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mike Muldoon, uh, 4 Colby Street in Hampton. I'm a uh, parent. I'm a taxpayer as well uh, for, for this uh, district and, and for this town, which I'm proud to be a member of. And uh, definitely, I want to say that. I also want to point out that I was somebody who was part of the Hampton Academy Committee to be able to do those things. But one of the things I did when I looked at that is I looked at the Academy as an investment. Okay. And when I look at investments, I broke it down to what that costs each individual person. And one of the things when I looked at that is I looked at that and said, it's about a cup of coffee. It's about maybe a pizza for each individual person in the town of Hampton per month. That was a $26 million investment that we made. By my estimate, the $200,000 difference may be a candy bar for every single member, including yourselves who represent this. So I ask you, as a board to consider <coughs> giving a candy bar to those people because that's what it really represents, but it actually represents much, much more to all the people in Hampton. Thank you. Anyone else on Article 1? By the way, was that candy bar per month or per year? I believe um, as a member of the Budget Committee, you can do the math. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else coming down, uh, Rusty? Yeah. 
Great. Article 2. Someone want to speak on Article 2, which is the union Second. contract for Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association, which was recommended by the Budget Committee 7 to 1. Hi. Ma'am, your name and address, please. Yep. Jacqueline McCoy, 10 Katie Lane. <clears throat> I'm the head of the Paraprofessional Union for SAU 90. I'm also a resident, a taxpayer, an SAU employee, a PTA member, a wife and a mother of three daughters that all attended the Hampton schools. I'm very involved in the school outside of my position. I'm a co-class advisor for the eighth grade class trip. This year marks my third time that I will co-advise this trip, twice to New York City and now this year to Washington, D.C. Between these three trips, we have raised over $50,000 in funding that has gone 100% to the students. I co-advised the Hampton Academy Student Council. And this past November, we raised $450 for the homeless and less fortunate families in our own Hampton community so they could buy Thanksgiving turkeys. All the while, collecting enough food for 25 food baskets that went to these same families that attend our schools. Also, as an advisor of the Student Council, we just raised $300 from candy cane sales. And that money, along with the recent coat drive, is going to Hobbs House this week. I am also a board member of the nonprofit organization called Think, which stands for Teachers Helping Individuals, Neighbors, and Kids. Those familiar with the Thanksgiving, <coughs> excuse me, the Thanksgiving Day Road Race that was held two years in a row prior to our construction of our great building, um, that money went directly back into our community, over $6,000 each year. More recently, we had a, a chili cook-off that Think organized, teachers helping individuals, neighbors, and kids. And we raised money for a student at our Hampton Academy battling cancer. She was unable to pay for all of her cancer treatments, and we were able to get her $1,000. <coughs> Those are just a few of the extra things I do outside of my six and a half or 6.75 hours a day. Now that you know a little bit about me, I'd like to thank those who voted to recommend the Article 2, the contract for the paraprofessionals. With the vote 7 to 1 in favor, you're probably sitting there asking yourself, why did I decide to speak tonight? It's passed. What's the big deal? Well, I'm speaking because there was some concerns, discussion, and a lot of negativity about our contract. I must admit, I was shocked that such a small contract costing the taxpayers about a penny one cent per thousand would have caused such concern. And I admit, I did message someone, and I did talk to them, because they were my friend. After reflection, though, I realized that maybe it's not clear exactly what a paraprofessional does. So I thought I could come here tonight and shed some light. We are a group, no, we're a team of 50 of us. We work with the students are, that are at highest risk for most in, at, are at the highest risk and most in need. We as a group spend our days working with students directly one on one or with multiple children at one at one time. Okay? Our days aren't always easy. Let's face it. At any given moment, a child can have a meltdown. Many of these students suffer from trauma related stresses. We are their support system throughout the day, academically and emotionally. I've often been asked, how do you do it? Where do you find the patience? Why do you do this for such little pay? I could never do that all day. And then it's usually quickly followed up by, thank you so, mu so much for what you do. You're so good with these students. And even, thank God you were in the classroom today, because I have 25 other kids that need me, and you saved, you saved it. Again, we work with the students who are at the highest risk and most in need. I'm not sure I'm really getting my point across, so I'm just going to say it one more time. We work with the students who are at most, at, who are at high risk and most in need. We, paraprofessionals, are the conduit and essential component of special education. Without us, who are highly qualified and a capable group, we are at a high risk of having to send our students to an out-of-district placement. <laughs> Outsourcing is very expensive, people, to the taxpayers. Outsourcing is a much higher rate than the cost of us paraprofessionals. I do know that every single one of us, all 50 of us, make a huge difference in the life of children in our district every day. How do I know this, you're asking yourself? I know because I get emails, cards, letters, phone calls. I attend meetings with these parents. I still hear from the very first student 
in the district that I ever worked with. That was over 12 years ago. They still thank me for the work, and it's a constant reminder to me why I do this. I am proud of all my students, past and present. And when I go out into the community and I see the results of all our hard work, I love when I bump into these kids. They're now adults working locally in our community, in Hampton. And they stop me and they chat about what they're doing and they're so proud of themselves. And they were at risk. And they beam with pride. And I know that I and all of us here in our community made a difference. I'm proud to be a paraprofessional. I don't make a lot of money. I appreciate everyone's support on Article 2. Our contract, Article 2 in SAU 90, is about one cent per thousand on the current tax bill. The average cost of your house in Hampton would be $4 a year. And it goes down. I guarantee this is the best value of $4 that you will ever spend. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 2? Do I see anyone else wishing to speak on Article 2? I don't see anyone. Should we wait for the people upstairs? That's all we do. Yeah. <laughs> Unless someone comes down from upstairs, we'll be proceeding on to Article 3, which is the $300,000 for. Uh, maintenance, repair, and modernization work on two schools, Marsden and Center School. Does anyone wish to speak? Oh, by the way, the... That's about how long the delay is if you heard the clap before. <laughs> <laughs> Budget Committee recommended this uh, warrant article as well, 421. Anyone wish to speak on Article 3? Anybody coming down there, Rusty? I right. Everyone loves what we did on Article 3, I guess, so I guess we'll move on to Article 4. Article 4 is uh, to raise $100,000 for an additional school resource officer. The Budget Committee voted to not recommend this by a vote of 3 to 4. Does anyone wish to speak to Article? Wants to speak on article three. Excellent. Nope. Article three, yes. Hi, hello. Hi, welcome. Thank you, uh, Sarah Elliott. I live at three sixty eight Winnicott, and um, I had admittedly late to um, catching up on all these warrant articles, so I apologize for that. But there is one measure that piqued my interest, um, and that was the security improvements for Center School. And as a parent who has three children, two of whom are currently students at Center School, I wanted to stress some very obvious security flaws that just as a passerby can see and note. And I think someone has already touched upon um, the sad times that we live in and the probability of school shootings happening. And I think that money for security for our youngest and most vulnerable community members should be a no-brainer um, as someone who is obviously vested, and I think we're all vested in the youngest members of our community, which is why we are here. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. So please, when you're considering that, um, just consider that there are some pretty obvious measures. The doors are not locked in the morning at the school. Um, I know that there's no physical way that Officer Shannon, who does an incredible job, um, can secure all the premises at all the times. So I don't know what security measures are being discussed, but I think any step for better security at that building is a step in the right direction. Okay, so just to be clear, you're speaking about the implementing security improvements on the $300,000 warrant article? Correct, which to article. my understanding is a $10,000 okay. line item. Well, it's two of them actually, I think, yeah. Money well spent. Thank you. Thank you. Are we all done on article three? No more speaking on Article 3. Let's move to Article 4. <laughs> Budget Committee recommended, or rather not recommended, this one, 3 to 4. Does anyone wish to speak on Article 4? Yes, ma'am. Ah, the Lady of Hampton. <laughs> Welcome. 
I'm Nancy Steinholz. I live at One Hayden Circle in Hampton. I have no children or grandchildren in the Hampton School District at the moment. But of all of the articles, this is the one I am most passionate about. And that is because I think providing security and a safe place for our kids to learn, a safe place for our teachers to teach, is probably one of the most important things that this community can do for its school system. We are looking for excellence in our education, and we have that. I want to continue that by making sure that we have a safe school. There is nothing more important than a child developing a relationship with a police officer at an early age, age five, six, seven, nine, so that when they get older, they have that to rely on. I want to have someone in our schools that is trained to react in a crisis. God forbid we should ever have one. I hope we never do. I would rather pay every day to have a police officer in our schools ready to save those little five and six year olds. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on article number four? <coughs> no one else wishes to speak on article four? I will. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Hansen, 98 Lock Road. Um, I've uh, participated in um, the schools for several years. I have uh, two seventh graders and a sophomore. So I've witnessed the SROs working in schools firsthand. So they're not only there for safety, they're also there for um, community building with the students. So students are interacting. They're getting to know police officers firsthand. In addition, the, the SRO is there to address issues for children at risk or who are not making uh, great decisions. And we want to influence of these lives of these children, whether they're in education and life or education in their classroom. So I think community building to have our police officers, especially with everything that's happening in the world today, um, to have children get to know them on a, on a in a positive way, in a safe setting, in addition to, uh, as a no-brainer, as she said, uh, the security and safety of our, our children. Um, the other thing is when you put a cost on it, uh, the other night I did agree with you. you could, we could throw money at this for a long, long time, security measures in our school. I agree with you. It's one of the fastest growing businesses in the United States. But I don't find the superintendent and the decisions that they make to be wasteful. If anything, you're always like, oh, we really wanted that, but you know, you know, we do without. But this is one of those issues that should go directly to the public, and I know you can't prevent that. Um, but I, I think the community needs to decide whether they want to spend that hundred thousand dollars or not to protect their children. And I think you can see we have a pretty passionate community about their children. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article Number Four? <laughs> Citizen Sawyer, please join us. I would never beg to steal your name, Tim. <laughs> it's not my name. It's everyone. Okay, I'll agree with you. Um, this article, uh, I, I spoke last night at the selectmen's meeting, and I understand the conversations sometimes where, where is that line? And again, I agree with you. I'm a taxpayer in this community. By the way, Rich Sawyer, 41 Vanderpool Drive, so I'm here as a citizen. Welcome, citizen. Thank Sawyer. you. I appreciate it. I believe that this is a topic worthy of discussion. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's a topic worthy of mature mm -hmm. discussion based on facts, mm -hmm. okay? And I think as citizens, we all have to make that decision. Is this something we can afford? And I truly do respect the people that don't agree, that they think it's either they don't agree with the concept or they don't agree with the cost. Mm -hmm. I respect your vote on that. What I would ask the citizens when they weigh that for themselves <coughs> and have heard what they say, Make those the reasons you discuss it. Make those the reasons you make your decision on how you cast your vote. But don't allow some of the things that we've heard in this room by some members of this committee that were nothing but mudslinging and derogatory towards an entire group of people, police officers, because of a tragedy that happened in Florida somehow affects how we should vote in Hampton on this. It had to be one of the most ridiculous discussions I've ever experienced in 30 years as a police officer. I get it. Sometimes people don't like the police. And sometimes people have access to grind because of the actions we have to take. And if that isn't clear to people that that was what was going on, then I invite you to go back and watch the meetings. 
It was a ridiculous exhibition. And please don't allow that to influence your vote. Don't allow it. If, if, if you don't agree with me that this is not a good idea for our schools, then vote against it. Somehow we'll get through it. We, we, the world is not going to come to an end if this doesn't pass. But make your vote intelligently on mature discussions. Thank you. You said that we should not, we should not look to Florida for our... I'm example. sorry, I can't hear you, Tim. You're saying we should not look to Florida for our example? Is that what I heard you say? No, so the, the manner in which, again, we can have discussions about looking around at what's going on around us, absolutely. But in, to lump it in the manner it was categorized, I don't, I don't think anybody that's reasonable could say that was a reasonable discussion. Right, that's so my opinion. The characterization, not the, the characterization. Okay, so we you. obviously, when we look at these programs and how we develop them, you have to look over the hedges. You have to look at what other people okay. have done and take the lessons learned. Got it. But to sit there and cast aspersions of, against police officers in general over what happened down there, it's just absolutely ridiculous commentary, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article Number Four? Yes, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Um, I, I come up here to approach the Budget Committee. And you are, of course, Keith Lassard. Keith Lassard, 173 Mill Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. USA. Welcome, Keith. Thank you. Um, I understand you guys have a hard job to do, and sometimes it's difficult to do, and you do have to make certain decisions. Um, but at home, when I was watching the discussion about police presence uh, in our schools, um, at first, when I was, when they first came to schools, I thought, do we need cops in schools? I'm from a different generation, I guess. But you know, after I've seen, I'm sorry they used the word cop, but that was in a, 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 a um, in, in, a, in a good way. There were comments made that there were not any shootings at schools in New Hampshire. Sadly, there was in Walpole Elementary School. And I know this, um, actually I'm getting some, I call them chicken pimples, but they're goosebumps. And um, Anna, our assistant AP, was at that school when there was a shooting. So she brings some realistic comments to our leadership team when we talk about security. The young lady that spoke earlier about security at Center School, security is paramount to everybody. We teach people in the buildings, don't be looking in, look out. See who's coming up to the building. See what's going on. Security is on everybody's mind so much. It's almost distracting. The other thing is, another story that well, it's not a story, it's a fact, but in the book about the Sandy Hook shooting, that young man that came from Kingston, New Hampshire, he does have roots in New Hampshire, he went by the high school after he murdered his mother and saw that there was a police cruiser there. What did he do? He drove to the next building. There was no police cruiser there. That's when he went in. So there's a lot of power in a police cruiser being parked in front of a school. There's a lot of good outcome for students to develop positive relationships with policemen. I just think you really need to think deep on, I think this is money well spent. I don't like spending money either. Um, but I think this is money well spent. If they'll drive to a different school, I don't want them to drive to any other school or any other place. But if they don't come into one of my buildings, I'm happy. And, and um, I want people to feel secure in our buildings. It's just so important to all of us to feel secure. We practice lockdown drills. We practice evacuation. And, you know, Hampton PD and Hampton Fire Department are very involved. They have quick responses, they're there for us. But I just, I, wanna, I don't want to dwell on it any longer, but there's no pen here for my, my, my name down on. But, <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I hope you'll reconsider that and please support the additional policemen for 
um, the Hampton School District. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. One point of clarification, if I may, Keith. Do you know what year that Walpole shooting took place? And what year was that Walpole shooting? Uh, I don't want to get away your age. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it was in 2012. 2012. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the hard work you guys do. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate your uh, valuable input. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 4? We think Rusty should I go to a count of 20 or what? I give at least 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> Going once. Uh, now, uh, we'll certainly entertain anyone who's coming downstairs to speak on Article 4, but we'll, we'll move on to Article 5 for now. Um, Article 5 is uh, $38,925 for the Sacred Heart School. Budget Committee recommended this, 7-0. Anyone wish to speak on Article 5? Well, I guess they loved our vote on Article 5, huh? Okay. Well, speak up. I'll forever hold your peace, as they say. Welcome to the microphone if you want to speak on uh, Article 5. Otherwise, I'm going to be closing the public hearing on SAU 90 at 7.55 p.m. It is now closed. Uh, now, for the committee, uh, is there any <coughs> thoughts on reconsidering, uh, excuse me, reconsidering any of our previous votes? Please note, not to make a motion or a second, you must be on the winning side of the previous vote. I, um, I wish to... Uh, committee to have a discussion about reconsidering the vote on the budget. I don't believe you were in, in the winning side on that. So I can't second your motion? No, you cannot. Can someone who was on the winning side second my motion to reconsider the budget, please? I, I want to note, I want to note, Mr. Chair, I was not here for yeah. that, as well as Mr. Ladd. Otherwise, I would be seconding it right now. I appreciate that. But I don't seem to be able to get a second. Oh, oh, oh. Why does, why does, well, can you just make sure that it's, the second has to be on the winning side also? That is the rule that this committee established long ago. Well, you know, before this year even. Uh, no one will give consideration for a second. Okay. Is there any other? Wow. Is there any other Warren articles that uh, we should entertain consideration on, reconsideration on? Article Mr. Frank. Four. Mr. Frank wants to reconsider Article Four. Well, you can't. You want? I can't. I'm just throwing yeah. it. Out. Oh, All right. I can't either, yeah. so. so I had no motion for it. Um, Sure. Get a clarification. Sure. You have to be on the winning side. Yeah. So you have to have voted yes. Yeah. On, on the last, no. on the last vote. vote. No. You, in this case, you would have to have voted uh, no to recommend. So in other words, you voted not to recommend in order to cause a reconsideration to take place. Uh, I got you. Vote was three. We've had four. this rule in place for at least three years. Yeah. It's confusing. Or is it your vote? It's not. It's been in place for at least three years. Okay. I don't hear anything else on for reconsideration. Jerry, one meeting. Excuse me. Yeah. All set. Yep. All right. Um, I want to thank the people from uh, that came in and spoke in on SAU 90. Um, sorry, I wasn't able to secure a second to get a reconsideration on the budget, uh, or apparently anything else for that matter. So uh, we are we have closed our consideration of SAU 90. Steve, this is, confused about that. No, I, 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 I no, it's it okay. Uh, it was a three to four. Excuse me, we're in a meeting here. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to move on now to the time warrant. Why don't we go? Why don't we go to the other ones? 
We've closed the public hearing. I already closed the public hearing at 9, 7.55. Uh, Ms. Vaughn. Could I make a comment to the public? Sure. I want to explain something, what's happening right now. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, myself, and Mr. Ladd, who were here to vote last time, all voted in favor for the SRO officer in the budget. Therefore, for the bu budget committee's rules, we cannot re make, make a motion to reconsider or to second that reconsideration. So therefore, we're sort of left at a standstill with everything for the two warrant articles that some of us would like to reconsider but don't have the ability to under the rules. So can you clarify that, that for the first one too? Just so we know, so who would have to reconsider on that first People who voted nay. Oh, people voted nay. Yeah. Vote, so who voted nay? Yeah, who yeah, voted no? Raise your hand. Yeah, you can do it. No, I voted no on that one. No, yeah, she's but talking about it. On article one. I voted no on article one. So I'm not so, so sure what that majority. why that matters. Yeah, well, Jerry's in the majority on hold that. Hold on, hold it's on. It's been the minutes. The, the, the vote, those who voted no on Article 1 were as Warburton, right. myself, Zanoy, and Moore. So you would have to, so those four would have to say, you get, you... I, I am one of those, and I, and I yeah. sought a motion right. for so a second to reconsider the budget. Yeah. I was not able to secure a second from the other three. So I am stuck. No, I, I made a mistake then, because I would have seconded it. Right? Here we go. Oh, yeah. 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 So is the committee okay with that belated second? We can proceed with reconsideration. Is there an objection? No. No. No objection to proceeding with the reconsideration on Article 1, the SAE 90 budget, correct? Okay. So uh, as you know, and since I made the motion, uh, I will tell you what inspired me to do this. When I voted no initially, I asked the superintendent what we would lose if the default budget won today versus the proposed budget. She was unable to answer me. Um, excuse me, guys, one meeting. I don't think he knows that he understands what he just did. Yeah, I want to make sure. He didn't do that. This is, this is confusing. We had seven votes. Against, on that article, three voted yes and four voted against. Right, you were one of the ones that I voted against. I was one against. of the four that voted against. Correct, correct. You, you were one of the four that voted. That's correct. So you, you uh, put a motion out there. You were eligible to put a motion out there. Right. And, and I thought you had to be on the winning side. I was on the winning side, as were you. Because it defeated. It was defeated. Yeah. Defeated. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you were right. I, mean, you I didn't consider that a winning side, necessarily. Well, you voted. I know, but I mean. All right, guys. All right, so we're all clear on that. So let me let's proceed with the reconsideration, please. So um, when I got no credible, well, I got no substantial response to the question, "What happens if the default passes? What do we lose?" I was like, "Well, it's less than a two hundred thousand dollar difference." So I was very much on the fence relative to that and, until I got the. The answer that I got. And tonight I'm hearing uh, things from the public, uh, for example, the need for the additional custodian, which has a credible argument to me. Um, and so for that reason, I am concerned that maybe I, I would have fallen on the other side of the fence. So that's why I'm raising this for discussion. So, you know, educate me why I ought not to change my vote, please. Well, I listened to the same things tonight. And I find it interesting that some of the comments is it was not just about the custodian, oh, and, and and what's interesting is, they we've heard people in the audience say they watched the meetings. Well, obviously they didn't, because not one, come on, come on, not one comment was made about. Well, I think there was one comment made, but the interventionist, my my terminology, mm -hmm. physician, mm -hmm. they didn't go in depth on that. There was also concerns by Mr. Zanoy, and rightfully so about what he, I think you referred to him as accumulating cost every year. It seems like we're, we're going up and up and up and is never going the other direction. Um, my whole rationale, and I made it very clear, and we heard a lot about the school edition tonight. Let me be very clear that I was very supportive of the school edition as I have with all the other school editions and school budgets and contracts. However, um, it does matter that 13 people 
it only passed by 13. Because there's still a lot of upset people in this town that thought that, that didn't vote for the school edition, who grew up here and have kids here and have grandchildren, <laughs> thought that the budget. Come on now, guys. The thought that the budget would be, uh, there'd be, a, you know, like a, a, take a break for a couple of years. And Mr. Pluff and I remember years ago, we used to do that. We'd have a couple of years with, just to give the taxpayers a break. It doesn't matter whether it's 1% or 13%. You add that with, we haven't even discussed the town warrant tonight. With the, the huge, and, and we, we have a great town, but where does it stop? I mean, do we, we say 300000 next year is fine, and then 400000 the next year after that? Um, Jerry Zanoy brought up an unbelievable comment, which has carried me since last week, and actually even carried me into Portsmouth Hospital this weekend, if you believe it or not, on another family matter that I ran into somebody from Hampton that said, Brian, you guys are absolutely right. I'm paying $8,000 a year in taxes. In the next two and a half years, I could go up to 11000 I can't escrow 1000 a month, and I have to sell the house. And by the way, a lot of school people have talked to me too. So let's be clear about one thing. Not everybody that's in favor of the schools don't disagree with what some of the things we're saying tonight. And so it's a very, and I would think that the public who's talking while I'm talking would give me a little credit. I have a wife that teaches in this system. You think this decision is easy for me? I mean, that's the, you should actually applaud me for being more fair. That I don't rub a, <laughs> wait a minute. I don't rub a stamp things. And I took a lot of effort. And for those who think that, you know, all the teachers, they're going to fly away if this budget doesn't pass and everything else, it's baloney. And the bottom line is I have a responsibility just like every other elected board in this town to represent the entire taxpayers. And, you know, as far as the chairman for this year and set, uh, setting forth, I think he's done an excellent job. And all we've done is debate, debate, and debate. And the stuff about rhetoric, high voices, low voices, give me a break. So let's just take a step back here. If the vote for reconsideration turns the budget around tonight, who knows? The taxpayers are still going to be the final choices. So, you know, and, and either way, it's, it's going to be. But I think that to sit here and say that, you know, we didn't have this information of that, and maybe, like you said tonight, you've, you certainly were on the fence, and I know you were. Uh, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody the way they vote. We have two members here tonight that weren't here before. I fully suspect the vote probably will turn around. But the message at least is going to be sent that enough is enough. And it shouldn't be, you have $200,000 here, a million dollars here, $200,000. I'm just telling all of you that, you know, for somebody who's been around in this town for 40 years, uh, and I have children, and I have grandchildren, and I'm certainly, and by the way, I have several people in my family who are in schools, uh, in administrations in schools throughout this state uh, that I've communicated with and asked for their opinion on things. And uh, it, it's, I just, I just get a little nervous when I hear people, sla you know, like we don't know what we're talking about. And I, I will say for the record that we have two retired Liberty Mutual executives at this table. We have a retired, can I finish my statement? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> retired uh, BAE executive at this table, retired a uh, person who worked for, in the publishing business for years, retired executive to my left, a, a CPA to my right, uh, and a, and a long-time uh, contractor in person, and plus an IET. The person I say this, so when we hear about the budget committee not knowing what they're talking about, I just want to say that. So go ahead and do it, but uh, please give us a little credit for, you know, believing what we believe in. Thank you. Thank you. Regina. Correction, I am not a CPA. I worked in a CPA firm oh, okay. for 10 years, and I averaged looking at about seven to eight budgets a week, just to let it know. Oh, good. Out. Well, I gave you a question. Yeah. Tim, look over here. Tim. Mr. LeBranch. Okay, I have a question. <clears throat> you, last Wednesday night, did this committee change the number that had been okay? That's my yes. question. Yeah. No. You did not did change. Not, not this so one. If, oh, not on this one, yeah. So if the voters in this town vote for this budget, then that position I heard about that is uh, intervention. Well, intervention is and, Yeah, and, and I heard somebody say that if we have to send that person out of town, um, or well, one or two people, it's going to cost a lot more than that amount yes. of money. Um, and, I, and I, just as a point as well, um, Bob Ladd and myself were at our own meeting down at the Hampton Beach Village District, and I think that I think that the um, if we're going to re-vote on this, I think you're going to see that there's going to be a change. Yeah. In well, the vote. 
There's no if about it. We are re-voting on it. Thank you. Then right. I, I believe that it will probably yeah. change. Well, let's see what uh, happens. Mr. DeLuca. Thank you. Also known as Mr. Frank. Yeah. Mr. DeLuca. Uh, <coughs> I, I would like to uh, just answer a couple of comments that were made. I am a taxpayer in Hampton, and my taxes are roughly over $9,000 a year. So I do support all these articles. And I know it's going to cost me a little bit more, but you know what? I believe in the children in this community. I believe in the school system. We've done an awful lot in this school system to improve the education. And there is a greater need in the special ed department. So if my taxes go up another five, six, a thousand dollars, I don't care. Okay? It's going to a worthy cost. And that two hundred thousand dollars breaks out to about twenty-four dollars a year. Twenty-four dollars a year. That's two dollars a month. Okay? That's two packs of cigarettes for people that smoke right now. <laughs> or a pizza. All right. Or an eighteen pack eighth of beer, all right? So to me, $24 means absolutely nothing, okay? I am, I am definitely in favor of that article. I'll be happy to take your $24 contribution to my pocket later on after the meeting. Anyone else wish to miss the lead? I think basically we have a choice. We bought a $26 million addition to the school buildings, and I would consider that like a very expensive automobile. And not voting this budget is not affording to pay the oil to keep yep. the motor running. Uh, we all have gone through schools and, and been taught by teachers, but I don't hold myself out as an expert on school administration, school budgeting mechanics, and I would defer to the professionals who come before us that they represent their opinions honestly and genuinely, and I found no evidence to not feel that way about them. Okay, Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, I voted no, and, and I'll tell you what I, why I did. I fought like hell to get the school through with the team that we were on. I endorsed that, I fought for that. Put myself out there for that, okay? But, you know, I'm sitting here on a committee as a late substitute off the bench, so to speak. And the tide is rising, you know, the water level is rising. Uh, the town is up over 4%, 4.9 or something like that. This one's up 198,000. And you look at why it's up, and you see they want to add a janitor, they want to add a, a special ed case manager, and they want to give some raises and so on. But why do we always have to add? Can't we, can't we understand our costs and start reducing a little bit? We're spending over 21000 a year per pupil right now. If you take the actual costs that we're impacted with and divide by the number of students, it's, it's over 21000 a year. I mean, you know, where are we going? We have to develop an attitude of doing more with equal or less, I believe. I come from that school. Do more with equal or less, Jerry. That's the school I come from, okay? So I, I don't care if we raise a dollar to two dollars. I just have to understand why. Some of these warrants really, really got the goat of me when I saw security being requested. Money from the taxpayer being requested. Hold on one second, hold on one second, everybody. You know, we are now in the process of reconsidering our vote on the budget. Right. And we need to listen to the, our fellow members and what, what they're offering us. When we hear the cat calls and the other comments from the audience, it distracts from our concentration. And we may not be giving the full consideration we might not otherwise give. So Please continue, Mr. So, Zanoy. So it's not always up. It doesn't always have to be up. If we sharpen our pencils and we begin to look at some of these costs and what drives them and so on, with 11 janitors, we can't do something. We can't, we can't do something to synergize ourselves such that we can get that extra space covered. 
No, we have to add. We've got 15 special case managers, four guidance counselors, a welfare worker, 25 pa uh, para uh, paraprofessionals. Okay. I think 23 or 25 are devoted to special ed, though, I think. I see, I see wage scales that I question. I question some of these wage scales. It's how they get formulated. They should have job descriptions first. A professional agency come in and should, should look at those, evaluate them, find out the complexity of what's going on, weigh them, and cost them. I got to see facts. I don't move on subjectivity or on emotion. But when I fight, I fight like hell on emotion. I believe that's, you know, I won't go into the school itself that we got built, but we always can't go up. The arrow can't always go up. Let's think about what we're requesting, how we can do things more cost effectively, and start showing the taxpayer, stop stop asking for $300,000 warrant articles when there's only two schools now instead of three. Asking for security monies when in fact we got an $800,000 grant for security. All these things come into play in my head. That's why I voted no on this article. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else wish to speak to the reconsideration on Article 1? Mr. DeLuca. I just want to clarify a few things, okay? As a member of the school board, we sat down and reviewed the budget, the budget that is going to the taxpayers in March. The original number was well over the 23 million five hundred and I think eighty two thousand it was closer to twenty four million dollars we reduced numbers we cut where we could cut we eliminated where we could eliminate okay the problem we face okay which seems to elude people on this board is special education is mandated by the federal government, okay? It is in the default budget, but it is at a cost in other areas, all right? We are looking at programs to reduce those costs. As someone stated, it's over $100,000 to outsource a student, $100,000. We're putting in programs to eliminate that cost. We're putting in a position to help reduce that cost to the taxpayers. Because believe it or not, all right, without those programs, your cost would go up dramatically. And you're going to have to support those programs because it's mandated. You can't say to the federal government, I don't want to educate that child. OK? And our special ed enrollment has gone up. Normal enrollment is relatively flat over the last few years, OK? But special edge is up, and we are accountable. Thank you. Tim, like Thank you, Frank. Tim, I'd like to read from the Bible. Mr. Zanoy. You know, when you say those things like that, Frank, to me, it's a scare tactic. Just like if you don't have a cop in the school, we're going to have a shooting. I happen to vote. I, want to talk after. I happen to vote for the opposite, okay? But this is what I hear when you talk. Well, if you don't do this, we can have the outpost outsource and have cost us three times. I have to see facts. Miss oh uh, Regina Not Bonds. everybody gets outsourced. Thank you, Jerry. Miss Regina Bonds. Well, I thought Mr. DeLuca covered it very well, but you're right. There's a lot of outside forces. Put They're going to put more costs on us, actually. And that is fact, Jerry. All you got to do is go and look at it up online. And it's happening all over the place. And I understand your concerns. I understand everyone's concerns. But I'm telling you right now, this is not the budget or the Warren articles to cut, ever. We're talking about children. We're talking about all these people that showed up here tonight. I'm sorry, but it's, that's the way it is. I mean, you want to offset the costs? Then let's get some, the school going and let's get some programs in it and let's help them out do that because I'm pretty sure the superintendent's got some ideas on that. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else wish to speak on the reconsideration of Article 1 <coughs> budget? 
I'm still confused. Mr. I'm, Moore. I'm still confused why we consider it. Jerry made a mistake. He voted against, and he didn't second you right. He did he didn't second. Want to. He did second. He said he did, but he, he was confused when he said it, is my point. Jerry, did you not second no, my no, motion? I didn't second him the first time. I was confused. Then. Right. But when he said, I'm on the winning side, you were one of four votes on the winning side. You know, I was confused. Then. So that, that's, what, that's what threw up. So are we done with the confusion? Okay. I'm not with confused. I'm confused anymore. I don't think. We'll have to go article by article to find out who was on the motion. Motion by John, seconded by Zanoy. That's clear. There's no confusion, you still right? second it. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 1? Whoa. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative of the some of the comments that were made by the public uh, regarding the interventionists and the uh, need for the additional custodian. Um, I also have to say that I'm, I'm being emotionally pulled the other direction as well by the uh, treatment that those who don't agree with uh, it are, are expressing uh, uh, excessive uh, commentary. But uh, <clears throat> I try not to let my emotions get in the way of my vote. So my inclination is to, uh, is to switch and uh, endorse this uh, article. We're talking something slightly less than $200,000 between the two. Um, and I think the interventionist, the argument that was made there is, is pretty solid. And I think the need for the custodian, and Keith, Keith kind of touched on it as well, uh, has a credible argument to it as well. And that apparently is about the $200,000 difference between the two. And so my inclination is to uh, favor this. Uh, any further comments? If not, uh, I hear a motion to, Move to vote. I have a motion by Mr. LeBranch to recommend Article One, mm -hmm. seconded by Mr. DeLuca. Mr. Jones. Mr. DeLuca. Any? Oh, you're going to second it? I did. Okay. It now seconded it. There's no. F is there any further discussion? No. Okay. Those in favor, please raise your hand. We have. Uh, everyone except Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, how are you voting? Vote no. All right, so Jerry votes no. Everyone else is in favor. Uh, you can see that we appreciate you bringing to the table our consideration, something that we had not given uh, proper weight to, and we've adjusted accordingly. I thank you all for coming in and helping us. Uh, form our recommendations for the ballot. You don't, you don't go through the other ones? We, we did. We, we already went through all the other ones. <laughs> I assume that there still is no further desire for reconsideration on any of the other Warren articles for SAU 90. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, that is correct. Okay, so we're, we're done with SAU 90. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, in, in helping us be more accurate in our recommendations. Huh? Yeah, I know you are. Okay. Uh, I assume uh, Frank is re Frank is recommending a five-minute break. I assume there's no objection. Is that correct? Hearing no, no objection, we are now on a five-minute break. We'll resume at 8.27. Okay. Welcome back to the uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting. We, uh, we will now be considering uh, the town warrant and their articles. Rules apply for SAU 90, also apply for the town, so I assume I won't need to review those yet again. And so the first uh, article that we will be considering for the public input would be the uh, master plan warrant article, $18,000 to plan a plan. Does anyone wish to speak from the public? 
name and address, primary yes. address, please. Yes, uh, Jason Bashan, uh, 9 Thompson Road in Hampton, and town planner. Um, would you mind if I handed out uh, information uh, to the board? Um, just one moment here. <laughs> Here we are, Jerry. One for you. Oh, Thank you, sir. Okay, so, so what I'm passing out to you is in follow-up to our discussion on January 3rd when, when I appeared before you um, to discuss this article is a table um, that we compiled the planning board, myself, and the Rockingham Planning Commission that outlines the phase one tasks and a little bit of an additional information that you might find helpful. Um, so as we talked about, there are five tasks in stage in uh, phase one, one being the steering committee facilitation, another being the intermunicipal coordination, the vision session and chapter, the outreach, and the master plan template. The uh, table that you have before you provides a little bit of a description of each of those tasks, the cost breakdown associated with each of those, and the time frame that we're looking at, and that comes out to the $18,000 that we're uh, requesting. Uh, I just wanted to point out a few items within those descriptions that might, you know, elaborate a little bit further on, on, on this and what we're looking forward to here. Um, in the steering committee facilitation, you'll see the words technical and guidance <laughs> information. Um, that's something that requires a team effort and a multidisciplinary and multidisciplinary expertise due to the range of ele elements covered in a master plan. One professional planner cannot do this alone, although I will be actively involved in directing the consulting organization on behalf of the town and planning board. Um, jumping down to number three, the vision session and chapter, where it talks about preparing a draft vision chapter. That's the most critical required element of a master plan. It will include a set of statements articulating the desires of our residents, because this is a public process and they will be contributing to this, and the guiding principles and priority to implement that vision. Um, jumping to the next item, outreach. Uh, I point out the keywords, implement a public outreach campaign. Um, we'll be using innovative strategy and public participation tools. For example, I anticipate we'll be working with the Rockingham Planning Commission on this phase one, and they have um, some innovative software tools that would be unavailable to us otherwise. Uh, a program called publicinput.com to get that um, information um, from the public to generate public support and feedback. Uh, we want the ma to maximize public participation early in this process, and that will help effectively craft the two hard deliverables that, you will be that the town will be provided from this phase, the draft vision chapter and the master plan template. Um, on ter in terms of the master plan template, outline chapters and general content areas and appendices. Uh, the master plan template is the basis for the phase two work that is to come later. Um, it'll do much more than identify the elements and sections of the master plan that are outlined in the RSA. It'll actually detail the results of the public participation and steering committee guidance as to what the town would specifically like to see in each section of this plan. Um, it'll very likely also help to streamline the phase two process, which potentially could lead to lower costs when we do get to phase two. Um, we would also look toward any grant funding that would be available for any chapters at that phase two stage to help further up lower that cost. Um, and just a couple other points to make about this and following up from before. Um, the master plan is a document that's required by statute under RSA 671 colon 1 through 674 colon 4 specifically. And the statute states that, it, that the planning board shall prepare and amend from time to time the master plan. As I've noted, our master plan dates back to 1985, except for some amendments here and there thereafter. Um, the statute also states revisions to the plan shall be made every five to ten years. A number of chapters again date back to 1985, and looking back, I found that the 1985 master plan actually replaced a 1969 master plan, so that was a 16-year gap there. We're looking at a 34-year gap from the last comprehensive update, more than double, so I believe this is long overdue. And it's something that, it's an important document that would also help us receive funding for projects, grant funding. Um, if another community has a current plan and we don't have a current plan, we're not going to be looked on as favorably as that other community. Um, so it's just a few things to keep in mind. 
Um, we're looking ultimately at a clear and concise document, a living document that doesn't sit on a shelf collecting dust, something that the planning board itself or an implementation committee, for example, would work to ensure is, is up to date and, and being utilized. So in my professional opinion, I think this uh, is quite worth, well worth the $18,000. And yes, we'll be back in a couple of years for phase two funding, but please rest assured that we will be mindful of the need to control costs while ensuring the town ends up with a user-friendly, valuable master plan reflective of the public input to be obtained throughout the planning process. Mm -hmm. So I continue to respectfully request your support for this article, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak on the Warren article known as the master plan? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Laurie Olivier. Welcome, Laurie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I am the uh, manager at the planning office, mm -hmm. and I'm just piggybacking on what Jason was talking about. Um, Jason and I and some of the planning board members met back in October of last year with the Rockingham Planning Commission, three members, and we wanted to brainstorm on how to get more energy and movement into preparing a user-friendly document that reflects and embraces the wishes of the community. What we're looking for is for the RPC to work with us, which is that $18,000 number, which is on the high end. We're shooting, hopefully, for much less. We just put that at the peak. But we want to actually, we need somebody to help us get out into the public to get this document going. The um, first phase is critical in having a successful master plan. The steering committee, the formation of it, the planning office is going to need the assistance of the RPC to aid us in existing the community to make decisions on what they want for our town what is loved about our town and what may need changes. Without a master plan, like Jason said, our town could potentially be pushed out of the option of receiving grant money. And like he said, we do need it by statute, not something that's from 1985. The planning office, it's just really Jason and myself, need assistance, meaning the RPC, to help us seek volunteers for the steering committee, which is this first phase. We wish to reach out to a diverse group of individuals, demographics, seniors, teens in the high school, neighborhoods, Hobbs House, soup kitchens, churches, whoever we can get input on what our town needs to get a legitimate master plan. The planning office, town, needs assistance with the RPC with utilizing social media to reach the residents. As Jason said, we need to have some type of templates, websites, the Survey Monkey, it sounds funny, but it's another website, um, <coughs> to craft questions and aid in potential event planning to spark the residents to want to be engaged in the town growth and vision. We're envisioning reaching out, like I said, library, coffee shops, um, chamber, local businesses, maybe even at local churches, anywhere where we can get some feedback on what matters to the residents so we can make this document a document by the people and make Hampton, help make Hampton a great place to live. In this process, we need to gather stories from the residents and identify community values. Again, all this assistance and tools, it costs money, and that's what we're looking for. Um, residents, of course, will be encouraged to then lead the process in concert with our elected officials and town staff for a range of goals, including planning, master plan, economic development, land use, zoning, and again, the vision of the town. The planning office, again, town, needs assistance, RPC, in building public awareness to make this document successful from when it's complete and have it complete going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Anyone else wish to speak on the master plan warrant article? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. I'm Fran McMahon, 4 Ash Street. I'm the current chairman of the planning board. Welcome, Fran. Uh, good evening. I'm, uh, I rise to request the uh, Budget Committee's reconsideration of its previous vote uh, not to include the $18,000 for our update mas uh, update of the master plan. Uh, the Planning Board, by a 7-0 unanimous uh, vote, uh, endorsed this uh, request, and the Select Board, uh, by a 5-0 unanimous vote, also endorsed this uh, request. A current and up-to-date master plan is vital to the ov overall community interest as we grow, develop, and reuse our existing properties. Coordination between all parties is essential to facilitate well-thought-out development. Major stakeholders include the public at large, the select board, the zoning board of adjustment, the conservation commission, the town departments of public works, police, fire, recreation, 
private utilities uh, such as Aquarian, uh, Unitil Gas and Electric, and the SAU is 21 and 90. Um, as Jason mentioned briefly, the uh, S, uh, the uh, RSAs, rather, RSA uh, 674-2 specifically requires uh, the development of a master plan. Uh, there are two sections that are required uh, by the RSA. One is a vision section, which Jason spoke about as our first task, and the second is a land use uh, mm -hmm. section. Uh, and which typically translates into the zoning ordinance. Uh, there are a number of other permitted sections that uh, I think will probably just about all be included in our update, a transportation section, a community facility section, an economic development section, <coughs> a natural resources <laughs> section, a natural hazardous section, a recreation section, utilities <coughs> and public service, uh, regional concern section, neighborhood plan section, community design section, a housing section, an implementation section, I'll come back to that in a second, an energy section, and a coastal management section. I think if you, if you, you know, think about most of those things, they're really appropriate to the town uh, as uh, where we are today. The master plan that we currently have is deficient or totally lacking in some of these key elements, but most importantly is not particularly useful or accessible to its intended users. The update uh, that we envision will be accessible and easily obtained and used. Uh, you know, we, we see this as being an online document, uh, an interactive document where, where uh, people can get into it and get out of it. Uh, I, uh, some of you may have seen the existing do document that we have, and it, it really is, uh, is uh, unusable. Uh, the update will also include an implementation committee, and I think that's uh, an important uh, component, and Jason mentioned that in his comments. Um, so that it doesn't become a shelf document. We, we, we view this as, a, as an ongoing activity. You know, Jason talked about the requirements of uh, periodic updates in the, in the RSA, uh, and I see that as really an ongoing activity. Um, of particular interest, I think, to the Budget Committee will be an improved uh, capital improvement section. So that you you'll, you'll have a, a longer time frame to see what what's in the pipeline uh, from a budgetary perspective. Uh, we've heard from elected officials, we've heard from the public at large, of the importance of the master plan, and I urge your concurrence uh, and I urge your uh, uh, reconsideration of your previous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Anyone else wish to speak on the master plan? <laughs> Master plan seems popular tonight. Welcome. Hi. I'm Ann Carnaby. I'm a member of the planning board. And I was going to read to you from oh. the insomnia pre <laughs> preventing uh, new book just out, Land Use <coughs> Regulation. Um, we've heard a couple of times that this is required by law. Uh, so I won't repeat that, but I will read from 674.1, Duties of the Planning Board. A master plan may include the consideration of any areas outside the boundaries of the municipality which in the judgment of the planning board bear a relation to or have an impact on the planning of the municipality. Every planning board shall from time to time update and amend the adopted master plan with funds appropriated for that purpose by the local legislative body. This is the law. This is our job. This is what we are asking you for help so that we can do it. In order to promote this interest and understanding, the planning board may publish and distribute copies of the master plan. Imagine if we tried to do that now. Uh, or copies of any report relating to the master plan and may employ such other means of publicity and education as it may deem advisable. I could go on because the law is quite specific about what it wants us to do for this town. 
And frankly, I think we've been remiss that our master plan is this old and this outdated. And so I would ask your reconsideration of our request for plan A money. Thank you. Thank you, you Anne. Anyone else wish to speak on the master plan? Welcome back. <laughs> Good to see you guys. It's been a while. Um, I think everybody that spoke ahead of me um, has enlightened everybody of the need to um, start um, updating the master plan. I just encouraging you all to reconsider your vote and support this um, money to uh, get started to do a 21st century approach with the survey monkey where we can actually get more input from the general public um, and get better feedback because many times during your deliberations I'm at home probably having a Diet Coke and some chips but um, you often talk about we need a master plan we need the C CIP you know a lot of times a lot of your language says speaks to falling back on having reliable documents I'm not sure we always follow them um, but we certainly need to have them in place as, as one of the gears of governmental bureaucracy to get grants from other departments and other uh, parts of the country, whether it's the state or the federal government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Anyone else wish to uh, regale us with wisdom on the master plan? Can you see the vote? Yeah, the, uh, committee, the budget committee voted on January 3rd, 4-4, and on January 10, uh, re revoted 2 6 on this article. Anyone else wish to speak on the master plan? Seeing none, I will move on to the next one article, which is the budget, I believe. Indeed, it is. We have a uh, <clears throat> budget warrant article. Uh, with a proposed budget of $28,141,882, or a default budget of $27,595,116. Budget committee uh, voted 161 one, not to recommend. Do you have an issue, Mr. Frank? I mean, Mr. Book? Okay. Um, does anyone wish to speak on the default budget or the proposed budget, also known as Warren Articles, on the budget? I mean anyone from the public, of course. Okay. Yes, Michael Pierce, 84 Lock Road. <clears throat> My understanding is that we uh, passed a Warren Article this last year in March that basically leased two uh, garbage trucks, leased them, and the money was for that year in that article. There was also an escape clause in there <coughs> in case the voters turned down the money in, ne in the subsequent years. However, there's no one article to pay for it this year. It's in a default budget, and it should not be there because the voters have never voted on that. So I'd like <coughs> for you to reconsider or consider your uh, conversations on that particular issue because there should be a one article to have the voters actually approve it, in my opinion, okay? And if, if we can't get it resolved here, you could ask the town attorney what his thoughts are on this subject because I think it's wrong the way it is right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Just so you know, we did ask the town attorney for his opinion on that, and uh, his opinion was refused. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Uh, Mr. Waddell, Waddell, welcome. 190 Kings Highway. Uh, I'm just confused. Number one, you don't have the votes up there so people can see. Yeah, it's there. Why is that? It's there. It's too small, I guess. 161. Okay, so my, my question is if I understand the budget process is that department heads come to the town manager, they develop a, a budget, the town manager looks at the budget, talks with each person, and then cuts or adds whatever he wants to do, whatever they want to do. Then it comes to the selectmen, the selectmen either pass it on or make changes, pass it on, and then the budget's your budget. Is that true? 
You then work on the budget and you come up with a final number. So my question is, logically speaking, how can you come up with your budget, the committee's budget, and then not recommend it? That doesn't make logical sense. It's your budget. It's not the selectmen's budget. It's not the town budget. It's the budget committee's budget. And I think people really ought to think about that. How do you do that? You, you, here's our number, here's our budget, but we don't recommend it. I think you should step up to the plate, and if you've got it, you come up with a number that you recommend, because you are the budget committee, and it's your budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the budget warrant article? Seeing none. Rusty, are we all done with the upstairs overflow? I don't know. I haven't been up there. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. No, no more 20 second delay. Okay. Um, no one else wishes to speak on the budget warrant article. We'll move on to the next one, which is the union contract for the police sergeants. Budget committee voted uh, unanimously to recommend this. Does anyone wish to comment on this warrant article? Seeing none, I guess everyone loves our vote on that one. Thirteen. The uh, patrolman police contract uh, also voted to be recommended by this budget committee unanimously. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Fourteen. I don't know the official number yet. They're all working numbers, so they're all over the place. The original working number was 15. I don't know what it is currently. 14. 14 and 14 on the new sheet. This one is 14 on the new sheet, apparently. Okay. You're welcome. Does that help? Is it bigger? It's bigger now. Do you see it? Is that better? Okay. Um, I guess we're all loved on this one as well, huh? Okay, capital reserve fund for a turnout gear, personal protective equipment for the fire department for a total of $200,000 into a capital reserve fund. Budget committee voted unanimously to support this one. Does anyone wish to speak on this one out? Wow. 18, page 7. I guess we're loved once again. Firefighter Safer Grant. Well, the Budget Committee has voted three times on this one. Originally it was 611, then it was 503, now it's 242. Anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Mr. Bridal, Rusty, welcome. Yes, Rusty. And thanks Bridal. for your help, by the way. 225, you're welcome. 225 Toll Farm Road. This is a safer grant. This is for four additional firefighters for this town. This town right now is working on about 1985 numbers of our employees. Our calls have steadily increased over the years. We, we have heard for years that we need more manpower. We're having a hard enough time. You know, I heard some comments about the, the old salt fire, and it was Stratum that put it out, and I thought that was pretty insensitive when it wasn't Stratum because they weren't the first ones there. So, um, you know, we need these, this manpower. It's important. The Board of Selectmen felt it was important. The fire chief came with a proposal of, well, we understand it's important, we also understand that there is a safer grant out there, and can we get it? And that's a way to help the taxpayers in this town. Because the first year it pays 75%, I believe the second year it pays 75%, and the third year pays 35%. 35%. So we are saving the taxpayers money while getting something this town desperately needs. And as a 30-year firefighter in this town and working on people, I commend the men and women of our fire department for the work they do but they are overworked. They are overstressed. We are constantly calling in mutual aid. You call in mutual aid, you have an ambulance come from out of town, the town loses that revenue. And I, I don't have the exact numbers of how many calls we had this, 
this past year that were for mutual aid ambulances. But every one of those is about $1,000. So we lost that. Stop. Think of our citizens. Think of the people that need the ambulance. Think of our citizens, our older citizens that need it the most. I would encourage this board to support the Warren article for the SAFER grant. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on the SAFER grant Warren article? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next one, which is the reevaluation of property. What number is that, Mike? 20. 20. 20. Budget committee voted uh, 611 to recommend this. So $150,000 to begin the reevaluation property, a reevaluation of property in town. Does anyone wish to speak to this Warren article? Seeing none, we'll move on to the part time code enforcement officer. 21. Article number 21. Budget Committee voted not to recommend this, 160. Anyone wish to speak to this foreign article? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on. 22. 22 is a highway block grant. Budget Committee voted uh, 701 to recommend this warrant article. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, the Budget Committee voted unanimously 8-0 to recommend this one. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone wish to speak further on this article? <laughs> okay. I guess we're on a roll. We're all being loved here, so this is great. So EPW Vehicle Purchases, number 24. Budget Committee voted. A decisive 4-4 vote on this one, not to recommend. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Yes, ma'am. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Jen Hale, 13 Bourne Ave, Hampton. Uh, speaking to this article, just to make sure that we're all clear on what it is we're voting for. Uh, this article is asking for vehicles for our department, including two snowmobile, uh, snow removal uh, apparatus that will be included with the trucks. Um, my take from every discussion that we've had here wasn't so much an understanding of our need for these vehicles, because I think we fairly demonstrated that there is a need, but the way in which that it is being funded. And I do sit here and say that the vote that is here, that is uh, on the line, as you have said, uh, stems from the way it's funded. Um, I do want to just note for maybe the 400th time in the last four weeks that uh, the undesignated fund balance is something that the taxpayers have already paid their taxes on. So nothing is free. What that zero tax impact means now is that in this upcoming, there is no additional tax impact. So to make that very clear, that, that funding that is being uh, maybe questioned as to why um, this vote is on the line. Uh, it is money that has already been appropriated and raised and collected, uh, and that has nothing to do with the fact that we need these vehicles at DPW. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the DPW vehicle purchases warrant article? Mr. Welsh. Mr. Chairman, uh, just as a matter of uh, protocol, and name and address. 4-4, four, four, town manager, Hampton. Uh, a 4-4 four, four vote is not a vote not to recommend. It's a neutral vote. It, it neither recommends nor, nor it does not recommend. That's according to the statute. The motion was to recommend. The motion failed on a tie vote. It still means it's not, re not, not recommended. Does that make it recommended? No recommendation. No. There is no recommendation. So tie votes are no longer indicative of a recommendation, I guess. Uh, anyone else wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. 25. 25 is replace culverts from Tuckfield and Eaton Park. 
the uh, budget committee unanimously 8-0 voted to recommend this. Is there anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next one, which is the lease purchase plow truck. The budget committee voted 7-1 to recommend this. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on. <coughs> Article 27. 27 is the purchase ejection trailer, trash trailer. Budget committee voted unanimously 8-0 to recommend this warrant article. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Replace the water line at DPW facility. Budget committee recommended unanimously 8-0. Uh, this warrant article, does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. LED street lights. Budget committee voted unanimously to recommend this warrant article. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund. And the budget committee has voted uh, twice on this. First time was two six zero, and the last time was eight. Or excuse me, zero eight zero, which I think is a clear not recommended. Uh, does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Household hazardous waste collection, generally not controversial ever. And the budget committee reflects that in its unanimous 8 nothing vote. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Complete cemetery building, $11,000 year one appropriation. Budget committee voted to recommend this 7 0. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? 8 0. 8 0. I got 7 0. I got eight. It says eight zero on this. You got eight? Yeah, it's eight, 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 eight zero. Eight zero. Okay. Eight zero. Mm -hmm. Next, purchase tractor loader for cemetery. Budget committee voted to recommend this. I've got seven zero. Someone going to tell me it's eight? Eight zero. Okay, eight eight zero. zero. Apparently, my keystroke is <laughs> one half inch off. <laughs> Anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Cemetery tree removal. I've got this as a 7-0, but my half-inch factor is in place, so it's probably 8-0. It is a um, does anyone wish to speak on the cemetery tree removal? Seeing none, we'll move on. Recreation infrastructure special revenue fund. I've got a unanimous 8-0 vote. Mm -hmm. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to information technology upgrades. The budget committee voted 4-4 four, four on this one. Does anyone wish to speak to this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Human service agencies, budget committee voted uh, happily on this one, I believe. Unanimously, 8-0, right? Mm -hmm. Stephen? Yes. Anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none. Electronic formatting paper documents, the budget committee voted unanimously 8-0 on this one. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Police forfeiture special revenue fund, the budget committee voted unanimously 8-0 to recommend this. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Town office inside front <coughs> doors, the budget committee voted 8-0 to recommend this one. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. The Naval Committee Fund. Budget Committee voted twice. First time, 080. That was in December 26th. And on January 10, we voted 251 on this article. Does anyone wish to speak on the Naval Committee Fund? Yes, sir. That looks like one of our state reps, if I'm seeing correctly. Uh, yes. Yeah, my name is uh, Mike Gabriel, 7 Hands Terrace. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, I'm up here, uh, not, not as a state rep, but uh, I have been involved in the USS uh, Hampton Committee, and uh, that went quite successfully. Uh, we could have used a little bit of monetary support on that, but it, 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 went, it went really well. Um, right now, we're working with the uh, USS uh, Virginia. Uh, we had quite a meeting last night. Uh, Representative, uh, I mean, Selectman Barnes was there also. It, uh, it it went quite well. We had a, a lot of people there, including the uh, uh, several members of the boat. But 
Um, I would like the people to, uh, you all to, you know, reconsider this. Um, we, we work with these uh, different uh, votes that come in. Uh, they're very helpful to us also. They do a lot of projects around, around the town. Uh, they had 30 people that were coming down to work on the, uh, uh, down at the um, playground, <coughs> down at Kids, Kids Kingdom. Unfortunately, it was uh, weathered out, and it's not going to be done now until the spring. Um, not that we do it so that we can get the use of their, uh, their, you know, their ability to work for us, but uh, that's one of the advantages we get. It's, it's mostly because we, you know, to work with them, uh, to show them uh, what we, how we feel about, you know, the people that uh, defend our country, and I would like to uh, hope that you all maybe would uh, reconsider this, uh, this vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the Naval Committee Fund Warrant Article? Mr. Rusty Bridle. Yes, again, 225 Toll Farm Road. I was on the USS Hampton Committee when we, we last did that. Uh, I was a very proud member of that committee because we had those soldiers, uh, sailors and, and, and uh, men from that ship come down here. They were with our Christmas parade. They did a number of events. They helped out with a number of the uh, rec department projects. That's all free labor for us, you can say. But we were asked by the by the Portsmouth shipyard. They said, you did such a good job with the USS Hampton that we, we want to have a host town. And that's all it is, a host town. We have some parties for them. We invite them to some business after hours or, or whatever it is. But we have party, you know, get them down here. We show our servicemen that we appreciate their service. I was never a veteran, but my, many of my family were. And I appreciate all our, veteran, our veterans and our servicemen do, servicemen and servicewomen. So I would uh, applaud you to try to think about this. What we get back from them, what we get in goodwill, it is easily worth $10,000. So I ask you, please, reconsider your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the Naval Committee Fund? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next one, which is the Police paid detail costs. Budget committee voted to recommend 7-1 day after Christmas. Uh, does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? What's the number, 40, 43. 43. Seeing none, we'll move on. Fund 21 balance to general fund. Very descriptive, I know, but basically this means that we had a fund called 21. I don't know why it's called 21. It was to uh, put money aside from the parking lot revenues into this fund, which would then be used to improve, I guess, lighting at the beach, although it may not be restricted to just lighting. But then subsequently, the funding source was redirected to the Parks and Recreation Fund. And so this fund was not receiving any, any further money and since it's kind of just sitting out there, there's a, there's a desire to do something with it. Some think it should just go away and put the balance in the unassigned fund balance. Some think we should keep it. What do you guys think? Does anyone have any thoughts on this warrant article? The Budget Committee's current status is we voted twice. Day after Christmas, 7-1 to recommend. We considered it on January 3rd, and we no longer recommend it with 0 6 Anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Conservation land. The budget committee recommended this unanimously, 8-0, $55,000 to purchase a certain piece of land off of Timber Swamp Road. Does anyone wish to speak to this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Christmas parade, always an exciting warrant article. The budget committee voted unanimously, 8-0, to recommend this. Does anyone wish to speak to this warrant article? Seeing none, we'll move on. Veteran service grave markers. Budget committee voted 071, not recommending this warrant article. Does anyone wish to speak on this warrant article? Yes, Representative Edgar. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, I would like to speak on this. Uh, I'm associated with the American Legion. I'm the junior vice commander. 
it's nice to be called junior at this age. Um, and uh, we have done a, a review. It basically was the, the historical society. Uh, Candace uh, Stelmack had done a review of the veterans in the, in the cemetery. And, and we found that there was an awful lot of the, uh, the veterans there don't have markers. So we are trying to catch up. We know it was a big jump when we were talking to the town about it. So uh, that's why we're, trying, we're going before the town to uh, see if we can get that uh, down of our veterans. And I would hope that we get some support for that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this Warren article? Mr. Keith Lasside, welcome back. Thank you. I don't know how we can't support this. I think that our markers are, they can't speak for themselves. But this is a good way for people to recognize those that have fallen or have served in our armed forces to defend our country and my right to speak right now. And I wish you will reconsider it and support this Warren article. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Anyone else wish to speak on this Warren article? The famous Mr. Rusty Bridle. Again, Russ Bridle, 225 Toll Farm Road. I have a number of veterans from my family that buried in that cemetery. They gave their lives for this country. They gave their lives to this town. Maybe they didn't die in the line of duty, but they still serve their country. And I think we need to honor them with doing this. It's not a lot of money, and we need to honor our veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this Warren article? Seeing none. One meeting, guys. Seeing none, we'll move on. Mace Road sidewalks. Always a non-controversial article, eh? Budget Committee voted not to recommend this 062. Does anyone wish to speak on the Mace Road sidewalk? Seeing none, we'll, we'll decide that this is the last article for us here. I mean, we're done. Um, so I am closing the public hearing at 9.10. And to the committee members, I ask, is there anything you guys have heard that has inspired you to consider or reconsider keeping in mind the rules that are always in play here. Mr. DeLuca. Uh, given some additional information on the town warrant article, the budget. Budget was not discussed. I thought we did discuss it. Did someone discuss it? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah. Mr. Pierce, sorry. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and based on this, uh, I don't believe. Uh, we could make a change to that? Is that correct or incorrect? Based on what? Um, you have to be on the winning side to make a motion to reconsider. Is that your question? Ms. Regina Brown. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider okay. the budget warrant article 12. Uh, yeah. The winning side was nay. Regina did vote nay. So I need a second from someone. I'll second that it. Vote from someone that voted nay. I think I did vote nay. You did you vote nay? Well, we can check it. Yeah, and Jerry abstained. Jerry abstained. Yeah. That's right. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are now reconsidering the uh, budget article, which is on the monitor. The number, please. What's number the number? Twelve. 12. Yeah. So can I have discussion now? Please begin, Regina. It's your motion. Okay. So we received a uh, letter here from the town manager directed to the chairman of this budget committee and uh, saying that based on the budget committee's recent votes on the municipal budget, town staff has submitted the results to the DRA as required. After reviewing the information supplied, DRA, that's the Department of Revenue Administration, <coughs> sorry Jim, has requested we specifically bring certain concerns to your attention. Please see attached email from our DRA representative, which I don't have a copy of that, but I think it went out to the entire committee today. No, um, additionally, DRA has indicated that if the budget committee continues to not recommend the budget as outlined in the warrant article, this action may have significant consequences. To eliminate this concern, it is the recommendation of town staff, this is from our town manager, that the budget committee come to agreement on a budget figure that the majority of the budget committee can support and vote to recommend in the warrant article. So I would recommend that we either come to a number that we can agree to or we go back to the number that was originally presented to the Budget Committee from the Town Manager and the Board of Selectmen. The motion is to reconsider. Is there any further discussion on reconsideration? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. Okay, we got Mr. Frank DeLuca, Ms. Regina Buns, Ms. Robert Ladd, Mr. Jerry Zanoy, and Mr. Stephen LeBranch. I believe that's five and thus a majority. So we will reconsider. Now you want a motion to recommend, I assume? I do, I would like a motion to recommend. Yeah. Second. So we're not gonna try to come to our own number or do we wanna use? I'll make a motion to recommend. Well, we, we, wait. Recommend the operating budget. This budget committee that worked for months did come up with a number. Hmm. It's right there. That's the number. It's, right. We reduced the suggested number by some small amount. I think it was about thirty thousand dollars. But that's the number that was this budget committee put forth last Thursday night. <coughs> that was voted on. I think it was unanimous to make that the number. And so then, then, we had the then, the, then the chairman asked for, uh, to, does it, you know, the recommend, okay. recommend the number that we just put forth, and I voted yes, thinking, and then everybody voted no, and I thought I was in the twilight zone for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I know how and, that feels. It, yeah, and so, um, and that's, so that's. So I'm, I'm going to make a, a motion that we recommend, recommend the number that we that number. agreed to the other night. Yes. Okay. So I recommend I make the motion. You second? No. Well, I'll well, second it. If you'd like to make. Okay. So can we vote? You guys done now? Yes, we are. Okay. I think. Anyone wish to uh, speak to the motion, which is to recommend uh, the budget, the proposed budget number, which is twenty-eight million one hundred forty-one thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars. Any discussion? No, I. I Mr. Zanoy. I have trouble with that number, uh, and I'm going to vote against that number. Um, I'm not happy with the town's budgeting system. I've watched it for at least 10 years now. What I see is this. Budgets get started in June or July or August by the department heads, probably in July. They, done, they get done with their budget. They finish their budget goes into the town manager. He historically has not mitigated or attenuated that budget by any large amount. This year, I think it was 0.07% down. It then goes to the Board of Selectmen. This year, they increased it by 0.1% or something like that. So I deem this budgeting process flawed and faulty and irresponsible and not worth a penny of the effort that went into it. And I have looked through this budget book, 219, and I can tell you it's full of puff and fluff. Hours I spent since last time we met. Line by line I went through this. Looked over the last, as a matter of fact, 017. Looked over 18 actuals to date. Looked over what they're asking for. Many puff lines. I don't intend to vote for that number. The only number that I would vote for if you wanted one was a default number. I thank, pass. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else wish Mr. Wobbler? I concur with Mr. Zanoy. Um, just for the public at home, the proposed budget is about just under 600000 higher than the fall budget. Um, my concerns that I share wholeheartedly with uh, Jerry Zanoy have so much to do with the budget preparation and what is not being told the public, and that is, you know, we walked in here to review the budget and we find out that in September we outsourced the assessor's department, you know, and, and just things throughout the year. we. We take a parking department and we hire, they propose hire a parking director and you take away 30% of the responsibilities of the parking rec director, but through no fault to the parking rec director, who I know very well, his salary goes up $21,000, uh, 23 I think. Um, there's just too much, and I've watched all the meetings, um, and you know, I want to comment, and I think one of the selectmen said tonight about, well, why wouldn't we recommend? Well. The problem with that is there are some things in the budget maybe some of us like. 
but most of it I don't like. And I can't recommend a quarter and not three quarters. Um, we would have had to cut $600,000. And I think to Jerry's point, I don't see, and it's much like the subject we talked about earlier because it all adds up, I don't see any trend that is helping the taxpayers um, positions after positions. Um, the municipal resources thing really irked me. Uh, it's just like, so let's just take what they tell us on salary. Let's just give everybody these big raises. Um, you know, we hear a lot of people, oh, there's 50 people here tonight, 100. There's a lot of people in the community who agree with us. It's getting out of hand. We want to be able to propose a budget. Mr. Pluff remembers in the 90s, and some of the department heads that were here in the 90s and, and former, um, remember we had several years where we approved budgets, many, many years. And there were also some lean years. Jerry, you remember bringing your kids up here? There were some lean years in, in the, the 90s as well. Uh, you know, I kept looking at this and looking at this, just part and parcel of the entire spectrum of what I believe is, is just, uh, you know, there wasn't, as far as I saw, a lot of great discussion on this. And I, I just cannot um, support something that is $600,000 more than default. I even think the default is high, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. We cannot, you know, I can't recommend or whatever a default budget. We know that. But I, I don't plan to change my tune at all. I'm definitely against this budget. And I will say, for the public at home, to the gentleman to my right that has received a lot of unfair press this weekend, that I think he has been more than fair in establishing agendas for the, week, for the, uh, the meetings. I think he's fine-tuned and diagnosed and drilled down on virtually every article and every piece of budgetary process, even things that I learned about this year, thanks to his help. Um, so that being said, we take our votes very serious. I, I cannot support this uh, budget at all. I cannot re recommend it. Anyone else wish to discuss the motion on the table, which is the uh, budget? I like to talk about it. Ms. Barnes. <laughs> so there's a lot of things I see that are wrong around here. But just because we get upset and we think that we want to punish certain people or certain departments, or I'm not even quite sure, to be honest with you, I don't even know where to start. But I think that I know our town management and our finance director works very, very hard. I see it. I used to do a lot of, not to the extent that our finance director does, but I worked in a, a lot with those reports for a long, long time. And things are constantly changing and she is constantly updating us. I think maybe some things might not be as clairvoyant as some people would like them to be, and hopefully that's something that we can change. But going back down to a default budget, now actually this year, 18's operating budget, or whatever you want to call it, is actually 17's budget, because we had a default budget last year. So, and I understand people's concerns, you know, it's taxes go up and we're not really, it doesn't, doesn't seem to ever be getting revenue to offset anything around here, which is very frustrating to me. <coughs> but at the same time, the difference is if you looked, which some people weren't interested in looking at the information that uh, the finance director had put together, the 5% increase from now right up until what the Board of Selectmen presented <coughs> to the budget, I believe was about 5%. Christy, is that right? A little less than five? Okay, so we're going to take, we have 17's numbers. These are 17's expenses that are in this budget. And so now we're in 19. So that's an average of about 2.5% increase. You look anywhere. I mean, if your budget, your own budget, doesn't increase by 2 or 3% a year, I mean, you're doing something right. You're going to try so it doesn't, but chances are, I mean, I looked, like I told you, seven, eight budgets a week, annual. Quarterly, sometimes they increase 2 to 3 percent. So I think for what we have, we have a lot of overtime in this town. There, every department has it, and it's just the way it is. So it's like, do we want guys that know what they're doing and don't mind doing the overtime, or do we want, you know, and we do have to do that, do we want outsiders to come in? I personally would like to make Hampton be Hampton again where we have everyone working here and everyone's happy and it doesn't feel like that to me now and I don't like it but just slicing the budget for no reason 
is not working. It's never worked. It will never work. Okay? So I am supporting the number that I think Mr. Warburton made a recommendation last week. I'm in support of that, and I would like to see that number move forward, and that is why I reconsidered my vote tonight. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, I, I can just add further add on here a little bit, and that is I looked over the last 10 or 11 budgets, and the majority, about six out of, I think, six out of that number were rejects back to the default budget. Uh, and several of the ones that passed had numbers very close to the default numbers and had stayed passed, I guess, from what I remember. But I say to myself, okay, gee, I wonder if the failure of that budget is going to be discussed at the next selectman's meeting so a post-mortem occurs. Never hear it. Never hear it. Hence, we have Groundhog's Day. Same process is repeated year after year that I just went through. 0.07 decreased by the 0.07 percent decreased by the town manager. 0.14 increase by the uh, BOS. And then it comes into this august community here. And I believe, I believe that the public is looking for credibility, <coughs> not necessarily for to cut for cut's sake. They're looking for credibility of the process, I believe, and they're not seeing it. No post-mortems ever that I have seen discussed on television. We lost the budget. We have a, all that effort from July through the, now. We lost it. What did we do wrong? Where did we go astray? Where were the biggest increases? Did we really need them? I mean, how much did we need them? None. I see them in here. For the last three days, I've studied line by line. I see them in here. There wasn't a year that I didn't look at every single line item. There's 420 line items in this budget. It used to be, anyway, for the town budget. I looked at every line item. The last five years worth of spending. What are they asking for? Is it, is it, is it, is it cost justifiable? Is it rational? Why are they jumping 10, 20, 30 percent? You look into the book to try to find the answer, no rationale. Now, sometimes this book has got some rationale in it, and it has improved since the last three or four years, since uh, Christy has been working at it. We're not there yet. We're not there. The process is not credible, hence we get defaults. <coughs> Anybody else that hasn't spoken on this, Mr. Ladd? If I were a member of the community, I would be so confused by the process and the votes for, you know, it's the old expression, first I voted for it before I voted against it. This $28,141,882 amount was voted by this budget committee at prior meetings. It is literally about $30,000 less than the original proposed Board of Selectmen budget. So it seems to me we could vote tonight and we could vote against this number, which creates a default budget, or in the alternative, according to the DRA, a, main, a whole budget crisis of some sort. Or we, we could come back next week and we'd have another vote and it would be different than this week or last week. We have to get some consistency if we to give direction to the community, which I don't think they can get from these contradictory votes. Anybody else that has not spoken? Mr. DeLuca. Well, thank you. <clears throat> I, I, I've looked at this and I've studied the book, and I don't have a problem with the current budget, all right? You had a default budget last year, correct? And I believe you had one the previous year as well? I think we had an operating one the previous okay. year. You have cost increase. Materials go up, the sand goes up, you know, when they spread it on the road. All those costs are incurring, all right? They're just translating these costs to the taxpayer. When I was in business and I worked for a major corporation, 
When we incurred costs, like we wanted to improve a plant, we pass those costs on to the consumer. They're called price increases, all right? I'm sure many of you went and bought beer and one year that 30 pack was $15.99, the next year it was $16.99. Those are cost increases. We're passing along costs. I'm sure the selectmen reviewed these budgets. There are some I question, okay, that I think a lot of the departments are taking a hit on some areas that they probably should have increased those areas. But I think they came back with a reasonable budget and that those numbers reflect increased costs in doing business in buying material for the town and they've kept it at a reasonable number under five percent the cost of living cpi this year is roughly about three percent all right so I'm, I'm looking at this as probably <coughs> over the last two years they've moved it so i'm in favor of the budget that they proposed anybody else who has not spoken mr LeBranch. When I, when I seconded the motion, I made some comments about um, this number is the number that this budget committee came up with. This isn't the selectman's number. It's not the but the uh, the, the uh, town manager's number. It's not the ask from the department heads. It's the number that we came up with, and I still don't understand. <laughs> it, it, it maybe it's just me. I don't understand how we could com work, come up with a number, and then the majority say they don't like the number. Why didn't we come up with a different number then? Uh, that's the part that, you know, that's the part that is like a disconnect in my brain. I just don't understand it. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Moore. <coughs> I would just like to say something in general because we keep hearing about the CPI. And one of the things we're looking at here is trying to look at things and improve them, realizing some things go up in price, and, which is absolutely correct. But there's sometimes you can count some fat somewhere. And how many people are looking out the fat? And I brought up an example before with the company I worked for, Liberty Mutual. Beginning of the year, the management said 10% cost across the board, which we did. Nobody was fired. Nobody got the raises, but we were able to look at and find some fat. But I keep hearing the CPI, and a lot of people within the town of Hampton are very heavily dependent on the Social Security. And I've heard it presented here that the cost of living issues is 2.8%. 2.85. Right. But back in 2009, and I'm going to go 2009 to 9, and I'm reading from the Social Security right now. Zero percent increase in 2009. Zero increase in 2010. 3.6 in 2011. 2012, 1.7. 2013, 1.5. 2014, 1.7. 2015, zero. And these are a lot of, you know, some of us lucky don't need all that. At the same time, 2016, 0.3, tenths of it, 1%. 2017, 2.0. And this year, 2.8. What I'm trying to express there, as long as these other costs go up like this, and some of the people who, and I know a couple of select people, ex-select people, who are very tight on affording their houses and depend on a good majority of their income on Social Security. That's all I'm trying to point out here. So we're trying to look at the entire picture. And in reference to the entire picture, you can't keep having costs going up. I'm just suggesting, which I did the other night, that we can try to look at areas and work with different people and work with the school committee for other things that possibly we can come up with ideas that might make things more efficient, most cost effective. We have done things with cost improvement where today we can do things that with two people we used to do with five because they changed the process to the other. But you take the three people and you have them doing something else. You're not trying to get rid of people. You're trying to get more money for whatever you're doing. That's all. But keep in mind that some of these people with all these figures, when you're saying 5% for the school board and 5% for, or 4.9 in reference to the operating budget, other people at 2.8, even though they got 2.8 this year, they didn't get it last year or the year before. The year. That's all I'm trying to point out. Thank you. Mr. Clark, you haven't spoken. Would you like to? Well, at the, at the bottom it says physical impact note. It said the 28, 141, 882. 
is an increase of 1,299,570, more than the budget amount adopted in 2018 of 26,842,312. So that, that, that statement right there says that it went up a long ways. Yep. In my opinion. All set? Yep. <coughs> Everyone has spoken once except me, so I'm going to do that now. The uh, I know Mr. Waddell also spoke to that question that you're raising, Mr. LeBranch, and that is, how can we produce a number and then not support it, essentially? Well, the number that we put on this Warren article was the best number that we could come up with as a committee. I know firsthand that Almost every, every member of this committee has called me up at various times asking me what if, what if, what if about amendments and so forth. And so I know there are at least five somewhat significant cuts that were being discussed uh, among two, three members, which I was not involved in because I offered no opinion. I just simply talked about the, uh, the substance and implications of whatever they were suggesting and, and, and so forth. So then the question comes, well, we only had one motion to amend at, at our <coughs> hearing. What happened to the other three or four? And my understanding was that uh, those who were thinking about making those amendments found they couldn't get it, uh, a third vote. So they just dropped it, didn't want to waste the committee's time dealing with it. Now, these, these ideas were coming from three different members. And so I'm guessing that each of those three members like, well, if I can't get this through, I can't support whatever number we come up with kind of thing. And while the committee agreed that's the best number we can agree to as a committee, it's not a number that necessarily we can embrace. The question is, the, the question was twofold this year uniquely versus the previous years. The previous years was we put a number out there and however we voted on that number, it was assumed that that same vote recommended our, reflected our recommendation. And I had observed that that was not true. The previous years, the Budget Committee was voting on a number that they felt as though they could just get passed in the committee and be done with the process. Never was there any idea by many of them that they actually wanted that number recommended. But it just by default would get recommended. So this year there was two votes. It was also done for SAU 90. We voted on a particular number that we could agree to as a committee as the best number we as a committee could come up with, and that's the number that's reflected here. And then subsequently decided, okay, now the next one is the question, which do we recommend the, the voters vote for? That number, which is the best we came up with, or the default number? So there are two different questions that produced two different or seemingly different answers. But I wanted to be clear, I think that is basically what happened. We came up with the best number we could as a committee, and then we decided as a committee that we preferred the default number over the proposed <coughs> number. So hopefully that explains how that kind of weirdness showed up. As far as the, uh, as far as the uh, communique from the DRA is concerned, uh, it's, it's noteworthy that the <coughs> Department of Revenue Administration's communication was uh, generated at 3.16 this afternoon, and we voted on this last Thursday. The query was sent out to them today, and they responded today, and I received this something after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Okay? So that's the timeline we're dealing with here. Now, the town manager and the Board of Selectmen have gone out of their way in previous meetings to point out, and I have done so as well here on the Budget Committee, that the DRA is not an enforcement entity, they're an advisory entity when it comes to municipal matters. And so, the Board of Selectmen has, on more than one occasion, rejected the DRA's recommendations, as they call them, and uh, so I see no reason why we should just automatically bend knee to the DRA recommendation on this matter. They're not clear as to what will be the consequence. They use the word may have implications. 
Well, of course, everything we do has implications, so I mean, tell me something that's not obvious. I have my own reasons for voting as I did, and I did vote in the majority on this. That is to say, I voted negative, uh, no, no recommendation, which is distinct from everyone on this committee. I, and voted it, a, I abstained from the first vote. Yeah, I know you did. And you're switching to a no, I understand. Absolutely. <clears throat> but for me, I'm, I'm, I voted no for reasons which were unique, and there's no reason me putting them because none of you buy into my argument. <laughs> so I won't bother going down that road. Uh, so anyone <coughs> now for the second round, <coughs> Regina Barnes. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. vote the way I want to vote too. Absolutely. So we have something in common. Um, so I want to say something. So we have a 1.299570. That is $650,000 a year increase because like I said, this budget is the budget that was actually prepared in 17 with the exception of contracts and wages that one, either a contractual or have already gone to the voters previously in separate Warren articles. So, like I said, that's a, that is a 2.3% increase, I think. Yeah, 2.3. So we can either, we can have a default budget this year, and more likely than not, that number is going to go from 1.3 million to, I don't know, Christy, maybe like another five, 600, say, let's say it goes up to 2 million. And then what we're going to default, we're going to have a default budget there and we're going to have even way more or less than we actually need to operate anything. Now, we had two emergencies this year, I think. Two? Mosh pipe? Three. That were handled pretty quick, and some people didn't even barely know about them. So I think management knows what they're doing, uh, and we have to let them do it. The budget is uh, what the town needs. The expenses are never going to go away. Actually, they might be more than what the budget's showing right now. What we need to figure out is how we're going to get money back into the community. And i got to tell you right now, Chief, I'm not picking you in your department, but you have, it always sticks out in my mind when we're talking about the budget, the outside services. I mean, that's like almost $800,000 of this $27 million. All that money, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars of it, is spent July, August, September, and I'm going to say that now all the way through March 12th, because that's all the extra, whatever it is, bringing police from other communities in, whatever the chief, deputy chief, determine what needs to be done down that beach. It's got to be done because if we don't do it, no one's going to do it. It's just the way it is. It's what we got to do. Same thing with the fire. Okay. You can say whatever you want happened 10 years ago, <coughs> Jerry, but we didn't have 60, 80, 100 foot buildings and they're just going to keep coming. There's nothing we can do. We didn't have a big nursing home down on 27. We didn't have a um, hotel right out down by CRs. Like, we need a plan is what we need. The first article that we talked about for the town, that's what we need the most. What are we going <coughs> to do? Who are we going to invest? And you know what else is in this budget that is not in the default budget? The outside services that MRI, I know a lot of people don't like MRI, but the reason why I like MRI is because they're going outside of Hampton and looking at something and coming back to us and telling us what they see. And I'm not sure what the amount was. Christy, could you help me out with what I projected to give, which all the MRI increases that are in the operating budget, that was my idea that I presented to the management and then it came to the Board of Selectmen. Why? Because the town employees, you see what they do every day and they're not getting what they should be getting. So we can continue to ignore that or we can try to keep them in the town working for us so we don't have to go get new people and we don't have our tax assessor leave and now we have it, you know, we don't have him there anymore. Luckily, we still get to deal with him, but he's not there every day anymore, which is what we've always had and we're always used to. Things take money, and I think that, uh, yeah, we can probably be a little bit more cautious, but I wouldn't say that we're not cautious, and I hope that the committee can uh, re-vote on this and we can see what happens for the number we agreed to, the 28,141,882. 
Thank you, Regina. You're welcome. Anyone else wish to speak, Mr. Zanoy? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of our costs should be paid for by the state. Where is the status of this court case that was moving and now it's stuck in limbo? Um, you know, and we don't hear anything on television about it. Right there with you, Jerry. Okay? So there's fire. There's police and there's DPW that put a lot of hours and put a lot of bucks down there. The state should be giving us money of kind to meet those services. They're not. But we're not aggressively pursuing them like bulldogs either. Okay? I agree. Now, we have politics are involved here. Okay? Now, second thing, the marsh pipe. If a good root cause analysis was done on the first failure, we'd have never needed the emergency. The contractor put the boulder under the pipe. BS. Okay? <laughs> Turned Terry, out a Terry, year later Terry, when you Terry, had a Terry, Terry, we're talking about the budget. Stay well, the I'm budget. talking about, well, she's, you know, throwing laurels over here. We still have and to I'm, deal with it. Hold on, hold on. No matter what. You have a budget that was, was improperly prepared, in my opinion. It's been this way for, since, I've been following it since 2009. It's attenuated 0.07 by the town manager. 0.07 and 0.1 increase by the, by the board of selectmen. Don't tell me that's budgeting. 50 years I spent in this, so I know what budgeting is. 0.073 by the town manager. Percent. Percent. 0.073 percent. Dropped. It came into the BOS. 0.14 percent increase. That's not budgeting. Groundhog Day, that's what you got. Uh, what happened to the brewery agreement? I don't know anything about it. And what happened to the status of phase one? Sewer projects. Where are we? What did we buy? What did we approve? I should hear it every month by Chris or Jennifer. I don't hear it. I don't care about how many dogs were picked up off the street. I want to know, and the, and the 10 million or 11 million we voted on, what has taken place? What did they purchase? What process did they improve? What building did we improve? There were some pictures of buildings that needed with falling apart or whatever. I don't hear anything. Don't ever ask me for phase two until I understand what happened in phase one. Pretty expeditiously. Because you won't, I won't support it. You know, here we are. It, 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 almost a year is over with. I don't hear what we've done in phase one. What did we spend? What did we plan? Where, what, did, what, what, did, what items were involved and what did we spend? Did we, did we, did we follow our plan or not? Budget, Jerry, budget. Okay? But yes. Yeah. Well, I'm giving you examples of things. It goes on and on. The amount of money that's accumulated in the cable fund, because 100 percent of that is going into the cable committee. There's like four hundred thousand dollars in there right now. I mean, it's pathetic. I mean, I could point out 20 items within the next 10 minutes. And then I look at this. Jerry, Jerry. And then I look at this. Jerry, hold on. I can't hear you. There's just too much conversation in the audience. I appreciate yeah. some cooperation. But, right but when I look at this and I start going through the line items. I think it's exception with Frank on this. It's just not cost of living in here, Frank. I understand. Frank, All right, we're big, we're big percentages in here, jumping. You all set, Jerry? I'm all done. I, I, I'm spent on the subject. Mr. LeBranch. <laughs> can we vote? Can we, can we you don't vote? want to follow Jerry, is that what you're saying? No, can, can we vote, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Mr. Mr. Frank, you want to speak? I'm in agreement with Mr. LeBranch. Can we vote on this thing, please? I think we beat this thing to death. Any other discussion? Yeah. One other thing, Ken. <laughs> Mr. Zanoy. <laughs> here comes here comes another kicker. Ben, here. You know what we're going to be spending on warrant articles this year? We're going to be spending on warrant articles between the school and us. Uh, okay. The school. Oh. Here it is. Okay. On warrant articles for the town. From at least of my I hope I added up everything. I didn't count on designated fund balances and cemetery uh, contributions. Two point two two million six hundred and eighty one thousand five hundred and ninety eight dollars for the town. 476 171 for the school, 
for a total of 3,167,769 on top of the operational budgets. Taxes are gonna rise. And if they continue with this rate, we will be at 10,000 pretty soon on an average family home. You're all set, Jerry? Yeah, I'm done now. Right. Quick, because I might have more. <laughs> Well, one, one thought came to my mind, uh, Frank, when you were talking about beer going up. Was it your beer example? Yeah, that was a perfect example, yes. That was a perfect example. Cost is still going up. It was a perfect example, but it was not a good analogy. If I choose not to buy the increased price of beer, no one's threatening to take my house away. If I don't pay my taxes, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there'll be a threat to take my house away. So the analogy is not apt. Buying beer is optional. Paying taxes is mandatory. Under threat of violence, if necessary, to remove you from your property. That's just the reality of taxes. Mr. Frank, you wish to speak. I'd like to respond to that. Sure. Now, let's take your home, for example. No, if it's mine. No, I want to no, keep it. No, no. <laughs> if, the, if a major storm comes through, okay. Oh, no, better still. Better still. Let's say you need to replace your roof. It's 25, you know, 25 years old. You're having leaks. Damage is being done. You have to replace the roof. 20 years ago, to replace your roof, it may have cost you $5,000. Today, that may be $8,000. Cost to do it. You're not going to not replace your roof because of the damage that's going to be done. But the cost of materials went up, labor went up, so you're going to pay a little bit more. That's my choice. There's a difference between choice and mandatory. That's right. I can cover my roof with a top hole and I don't have to replace it to avoid damage, you know. <laughs> but can we so it would be a real pain in the butt managing like the top to hole, and of course. Miss, Miss Regina. Jerry, I agree with you. <sighs> Good. But. No, no buts? No, there is a but. The problem I have when I look at the financials, which I'm not sure, I look at them a lot, but this town's assets, I don't know what the number is, but I know the percentage of what we haven't invested in is well over 50. It's about 50, probably 51, 52%. So the depreciation outweighs our what our actual assets are. What's happening is maybe money's not going to where it should be going, but there is a lot of people and a lot of departments in this town that are working with next to nothing. And we can't, it's not a question of, it's just the way it is. I mean, public works. All these questions, why weren't they asked when we had the public works in and when we had parks and recs and you know, it's like they all come at the last minute. I've been on this committee now for three years, and it's the last day they make all these decisions. Why? Why? Why is it like that? It's not fair. It's, you, you, transparency is supposed to work both ways. And why did I flip-flop? Because I had a lot of not transparent things happen to me through this whole budget process. But... I'm going to vote for the town's operating budget. That's what I'm going to do. And then at the deliberative session, if anyone doesn't like what I do, then they better come and they better tell me. And it's not going to be management and it's not going to be other selectmen. It's got to be the people of Hampton. What do you want? Because we can't keep going at this rate, but at the same time we can't just slash stuff out for no reason or say that we're just wasting money. So I'm gonna vote however I want and I'm gonna vote for this budget tonight that was presented by our budget committee last week. And <coughs> when we're ready to vote, let me know. That's the chair. Mr. LeBrange. Um, at the end of the day, the people in this town are gonna to tell you what they want. Right. Okay, because they're gonna to go to the, they're gonna go and vote in March. Exactly. Okay. So then you'll have your answer, okay? Right. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Anybody else? You know, I've got on the screen, I, I did an analysis a few weeks ago on the default versus proposed budget, and I observed a trend that it seems to be there, that when the difference between the default and the proposed budget 
is around 400,000, passing it becomes very iffy. When it goes above that, it seems to be a, an absolute no-brainer in terms of being defeated. Right now, we're at, what, $600,000 difference? Just, yeah, just under. And you know, that, that, that would be comparable to 2015, when it was a $644,000 difference. That proposed budget receives 38.26% of the vote. 38.26% of the vote. It seems as though the, the, the voters are, are, are primarily looking at the, the delta between the proposed, proposed and the default budget. And, you know, unless we're able to drive the, <coughs> narrow the gap in the delta that we're looking at right now, I don't, I don't see the voters supporting this. Yeah. All right. Again, I have my own arguments, my own reasons, but no one believes, no one likes, or whatever, as to why I'm voting no. It really has nothing to do with that delta, but it appears as though the voters are using that as their gauge. And I just wanted to highlight that. Okay. Um, I see nothing wrong with us having a, putting a number out there, nothing at all wrong with putting a number out there, as we did. And then when we decide to recommend doing a comparison between default and proposed, and coming up with a different answer, I see nothing at all wrong with that. And I see it consistent with our duties of office. So, does anyone else have anything else to say on this god-awful water article? We spent so much time on it, it's only really nice to go over. Any, anything else? Then we're going to vote. <coughs> the motion by Ms. Barnes, I believe, was to uh, recommend uh, the number, seconded, seconded by Mr. LeBranch. You got that? Uh, 28,141,882. Yeah. Yes. All, those, yeah. all those in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Frank DeLuca, Regina Bob Barnes, Mike Plush, Bob Ladd, and Stephen LeBranch. All those opposed, raise your hand. Mr. Warburton, Mr. Zanoy, Mr. Mora, and me. That's 5-4, I believe, right, Fred? 5-4 yeah. recommended. Is there anything else that you wish to reconsider? I'd like to look at uh, the warrant article on the planning. Whichever uh, article. Huh? Which one are you talking about? Uh, well, but they That's changed. The yeah, they it's changed. the first one. The <coughs> very first one? Yeah. The yeah. Article yeah. One? Article 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Master plan. Okay. The master plan. Thank you. All right. The master plan we voted twice on now. The last vote was 2 6. So, did you vote nay? I can't remember what I voted. Yeah, I, believe I think you. me and you were the, you the, the, we were the, the minority. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, those who voted nay on this article are entitled, of course, to make a motion to reconsider if you so wish. I don't see anything. Any other ones you want to think about reconsidering? I'm hearing deafening silence here. Okay. Um, then we are done with the town uh, article. We reconsidered the budget and now recommended 5-4. I want to uh, basically close out this meeting by saying this year has been a very interesting year. Uh, I'm really quite proud of this committee, of all of the stuff that's come our way, which is pretty normal year after year after year. This year, <coughs> we, did not, we did not react emotionally ever. And I think that, that goes well. We stayed on the high road throughout the year, continued this evening as well. I'm sure it will continue through our last meeting, which will be <coughs> in February. And I thank you all. It was a pleasure working with you all. And I thank all of the public for coming in and offering their wisdom for our consideration. And uh, anything else, anybody? Mr. LeBranch. I, I do want to mention, Ms. Uh, Chairman Jones, that we have the, the school's MS-27 right. that needs signatures right. from this thank board. You. I'm going to pass it to Jerry. I've already signed it. Members, so please, please stick around to sign that. Uh, Christy, do you have one for us? Okay, please go around the table and then... Uh, and Thank you. We are adjourned. Good night, Nick. Thank you very much. Good night.